We're going to be brewing an Imperial Oatmeal Stout. I hope everybody's doing good. It's Thursday. We figured we'd try Thursday, brew day instead of Friday. So, hope everybody's doing well. Um, we This is a recipe we've brewed quite a few times, based on tweaks over the years. Um, but there will be a link to the recipe kit if anybody wants to, uh, to buy the kit. We'll pack it up, ship it out to you. Um, but we cheated a little bit. We got our water up to temperature. Um, we're mashing at 154. So I think there's nothing left to do but to do it. I think Kyle's going to join the brew day today. He's doing uh, 
technical support over there. But everything's looking good. So you can be able to pull the chat up and we'll be good. So I guess while Kyle's getting that set up, I may as well kill the pump and I'll start, may as well start mashing in. And um, all right, we're gonna be doing, it's gonna be a pretty decent size grain bill, uh, a little bit under 20 pounds. And what I'm gonna do, when I have bigger grain bills like this in the 10 gallon system, I'll just pull off a couple gallons of water into a clean bucket. Uh, water salts are already added to, already heated up, water salts are in. But I'm just gonna pull off a couple gallons of water, add our grains, and then I'll add water back into the kettle. Uh, I'm assuming we'll be able to fit all the water and all the grains, but it's kind of an, a nice thing so you don't overflow. <clears throat> and if we don't, if we have water that won't fit, we'll save it and we'll just do a dirty sparge all right. at the end. Yeah, so let's brew some beer. Do we got a bucket just to pull uh, pull a little water off into? Yeah, sure. Cool. Yep. Thanks everybody for joining us. You want to just pump it in there, or? Yeah, oh yeah, we could, yeah. we could do that. Yeah, did somebody say they're from Zanzibar? I need to uh, somehow. I need to be able to rewind this. So I'm just gonna pop off two Zanz gallons. Yeah, Zanzibar, Africa Overland Adventures. That's sweet. Oh, wait a second, Africa Overland Adventures. Were you at the, um, what is it, Overland Expo? I haven't been in a while. Have you ever been there? It's sweet. Yeah. Yeah, if you're still in here in the, in the um, brew day, let us know. Because I saw, I met somebody at the African, or no, I met somebody at like the Overland Expo. How much do you want in there? I'm gonna do about two. Two? Um, and they had, an ins they had like a Unimog, just an insane, Oh, huge, sweet. Massive like military vehicle. Yeah, those things are sweet. Yeah, but it's they like, had ducked it out to be a camper. It was, it was absurd. Like the LT-35s or like yeah. the Big Brother, the Vanigans. Yeah. Those things are sweet too. Yeah, what's up, Bay Brewers? We got Brother John, Malcolm Malcolm, Jacob Capera, Capera, Durant X. What's going on? How are you guys doing? Uh, brewing salt, uh, brewing water is a really good calculator. And uh, brew, our beer smith has a decent water salt calculator. Um, but basically, you just, you just have to enter in what your current water profile is. And you can typically get that from your city water report. Um, we're kind of lucky because White Labs is here and they run water reports, reports periodically um, and they update those. So um, we'll, we'll need the basket. Well, I just kind of get it out of the way because you're going to pour oh, the grains shoot, into no. the basket. Let's, let's, let's pour the grains <laughs> into the basket. <laughs> Starting off good, guys. This has been, uh, this has been Dude, that it's, day it's exactly. Been a, it's been a rough morning. Both of us, yeah. Ugh. All right. Cool. Sweet. Uh, yeah. So I'll go over. I guess I'll go over a little bit of the grains. Really. It's gonna be. What do we got? And so we're not gonna we're not gonna regrind. No. The, these our kits. This is so crush this is basically how our kit crush. comes. Yeah. And we double crush them, so you're gonna get pretty solid efficiency. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of designed for a brew the bag system. You can obviously brew it on any system. Yeah. Um, right. We do crush the. Uh, the flaked oats is just easier to package everything together. Let's inspect. So there's going to be a lot of pale, uh, pale malt, flaked oats. There's going to be some crystal in there, some chocolate malt, some roasted barley, some carafa. So it's I'm excited. It smelled really good when we milled it up. Well, what do you think about, um, you know, I mean, the crusher looks it looks pretty good. But I feel like we have our mill set so tight. But this is how they're going to be shipping. So. Yeah, sure. Well, I was just going to say, I was just basically saying if if someone wants to crush more. They could. Yeah, I feel I, like you could crush a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. There's always room for crushing. Oh, always room for crushing. But it's it's pretty decently crushed. It's not yeah. flour, but um, it, uh, it, it's pretty solidly double crushed. Um, the upper camera might yeah, get a nice view of it. Let's transition to the sky cam. And uh, let me know if I lose the audio. But, uh, you know, I don't know. Probably, probably uh, can't really like focus on that. 
No, but I would say it's probably a slight little bit looser than a, a credit card. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's it'll be a pretty good mu grand crush, but you can definitely throw it through a third yeah. on your own mill. Okay. Um, but you should, I feel like we'll get, I kind of, the last couple of times I brewed this, I've gotten like 65% efficiency just because mm -hmm. it's a little bit gr bigger grain bill. Right. Typically I'll get 70, but on a higher gravity beer. So we should have a little bit of wiggle room. So All I think right. we'll, we'll do a pre boiled gravity to see All where right, we're we'll at. check it out. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right, so good on audio. Sweet. Well, let's Wanna do it. dump it? I'll stir and yeah. we'll start brewing. Yeah, let's go back to Skycam and uh, do it to it. Ooh, Skycam. Yeah. So are both cams live or just the... Just the one on the right. One of them. Okay. Yeah. So. All right, ready? Yeah, man. I do want to... Um... Oh, yeah. And we just have the grain split between two bags because we didn't have a bag big enough. Yes. Yet. So um, when we start shipping these, we'll have a bigger bag. So all the ingredients will just show up in one bag. You know it's going to be a good beer when it's a double bag beer. Yeah, dude. It smells good already. It's that, that time of year. And I had a really nice stout last night at the Whale. Oh yeah? I cannot remember the name of it. That good, huh? It was that good. <laughs> it was like a solid 15%. Yeah. Sweet. One bag. You know what I am gonna do today? I'm going to uh, get some B-roll because we're gonna turn this into sort of like a more uh, edited, produced video. Good tr try our best. So, yeah. Did you wanna get some B-roll mead putting it in, or? Uh, yeah, actually, that would be cool. That might work. Yeah, but first I need to get a shot of the grains. So if anybody ever wants to make an extremely long brew day, all you need to do is film it. Film it. <laughs> Brew show live tonight. Oh, sweet. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, I wanted to mention that. Someone, uh, who, uh, Northwest. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, there's a rumor floating around that brew show will be live tonight. So, what time are you doing that, young man? Is that Trent on the. On yeah, Tr Trent's oh, sweet, on there. Sweet. And if you haven't checked it out, um, Brew show just did a. Uh, video with our one gallon, new one gallon kit, which is pretty sweet. And probably did about a 300 times better job than we would have done. Pretty so. much, yeah. He's like, why do you want me to do it? And we said, uh, you know why. Because <laughs> we want people to actually learn something. All right. All right. So we're almost, we're halfway mashed in. We had to take a little break. Uh, three or 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. So is that 9.30 Eastern? Uh, or is it three hours Pacific to Eastern? Yeah, right? Yeah, three hours. I don't know. Trent, 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 Trent tell us. let me know how the math works. How, does, I think it's time, how does time math work? How's time work? All right. You ready? Ready for the next, for the second half? Throw her in there, man. Throw her in there? We're gonna have to add more water, but I just wanna make sure we get all the grains in. You know how many pounds total we have here? It's uh, just shy of 19. Okay. So it's not huge, but this is a, a really nice method um, if you are brewing, you know, in prob I mean, the most you could probably get in here with covering all the grains safely is probably in the low 20s. Um, and we've definitely been there before. 
Um, Man, let me see what, let me get a shot of this before yeah, you. Yeah, so you can see how dry it is. Wow, is that as mixed in as you can get it? Yeah, without adding water, which is Ooh, why. Oh man, okay. Yeah. Um, all right then. Dude, that's like, I, I mean, it's, it's dry. I bet I probably pulled off more than two gallons. So, we'll probably get most of this back in without a problem, but it is a nice method. And then if you have any extra um, water, yeah. if you have, you know, probably, you know, the safe, safely, I would say low twenties would be the most you can max this out at without coming into an issue where you don't have enough water <laughs> covering your grains. So, but you can brew a pretty solid sized beer um, using this method. And then if you really wanted to brew like a super high gravity beer and you know, you're limited by kettle size, you could always during a boil, just throw in some dry malt extract. You know, that's, I know a bunch of commercial breweries that do that on their big, big stouts just because they don't have the space and then they'll just goose it with a bunch of dry malt um, during the boil so um, but that smells good I think we can get nice. the, probably get the rest in there all right cool. but I figured I'd show this method just in case we get questions on higher gravity beers a lot all right Africa Overland Adventures is still here I will we will trade you a 20 gallon brew system for a trip for a trip african overland adventure trip we'll go anywhere we'll go to mcdonald's i'll even throw in a keg mcdonald's we'll take a ride to bojangles <laughs> whatever you're into there is bojangles in africa right <laughs> all right so all right so we didn't good, we didn't man. need to do the water trick i kind of just wanted to show it yeah um so 19 pounds just okay. shy just okay. shy of 19. So, boom, nice. And then, so yeah, we got it all back in there. So I'll turn the uh, recirculation pump on. Ooh, we got a dough ball. Dude. And then, oh, do you know what? What? Do you want to set a 60 minute timer? Siri. Dude, Siri, Siri doesn't, does not care what I say. Hey Siri, am I doing it wrong? Oh, there, set a 60 minute timer. Is Siri, Siri's Apple? Oh, yeah. I never, I never use that. Okay. All right. All right, you want to do that again? Just like, just for, for people who are not familiar with this, all Limit did was, um, well, I guess you're going to prime the pump. Yeah, I got to prime the pump. Yeah, so before you put the um, the hose on the spray valve on the lid, we always prime the pump. So you just pump some water into the top of the kettle, like Emmett's doing here. Yeah, there's a pretty good restriction in the spray valve. So yeah. and then you'll turn your uh, your pump off and then put it back onto the valve there, and then boom, you're off to the races. So. We did have somebody um, call us not too long ago and said the pump was screwed up. Um, the ball valve was closed, so just remember to open your ball valve. Is that when I was out of town? At least check, at least check the ball valve before you like send an angry email. I mean, we all have a couple beers when we brew, but yeah. that was pretty good. It's like the heating element's not working. Oh, it's not plugged in. Yeah, but yeah, that's the. That's pretty funny. Yeah, exactly. But that's the same with like computers and everything. People always do stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think Bojangles has made it out of the south, which. Dude, they would crush it if they moved any. Okay, we got an agreement though. Oh, he's got, we got Going a kilogram Africa, conversion. Baby. Yeah, maybe I'll, yeah, Beersmith, I don't know if there's a way to like print it in both Imperial Korean, and, so. but like that, yeah, the, we could, I could look into learning the metric system. Yeah. Probably would be useful in life. You know what we need is a trapper keeper with Ooh, um, like, like those plastic sleeves because every one of our brew sheets looks like this. Yeah, I'm gonna grab it's a already rag. Sorry, dripping water. And with a cool logo on it. What if we made oh, yeah. a, a claw hammer trapper, trapper keeper? keeper? Claw hammer branded trapper keeper. And you put, put all your brewing sheets in it. That actually is a pretty good idea. Yeah. Except I think nobody, um, prints out brew sheets from uh you had it probably all on grain. the phone what do, what do we Beers? use i guess the average nobody, using nobody brew father uses, now 
Linux and <laughs> beer smith, beer smith, and a printer. That's true. Except for us, it is nice to have printed sheets though. But yeah, you're right. Like when I'm at home, I just pull my phone out yeah. and, and look at it. But um, I don't know. It could be cool though. Yeah. Do, does anybody out there print their things? iPad. iPad. iPad guys. iPad. That makes sense. I don't have one. Trapper keepers. <laughs> yeah, but we're bringing them back. Do kids still use them? We're bringing like your them back. Son? No. Um, he does. He has, so my son has, it's not a trapper keeper. It's just like kind of like a regular three ring binder. Okay. But guess who's on the front of it? His favorite YouTube star. Oh, I don't know who, um. No, Mr. Beast. Is it Mr. Beast? Mr. Beast. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. It's actually pretty That's cool. That's why every kid's, um, dude, when I was in Ireland at this, um, like where the wedding was at, at like a resort little place. Yeah. There's uh, an Irish family there with their son, who's probably about Boone's age, maybe a little bit younger. Yeah. And he recognized you. No, he was just like, <laughs> you're, you're, he just was so fascinated 13. that we were American. And he was like, do you know Mr. Beast? Oh, and I was funny. like, no. And his parents were like, dude, like he is insane for Mr. Beast. Really? And he's like, he loves America and wants to go to America just because Mr. Beast. Wow. And I had in my wallet, I had like one American one dollar bill. Yeah, you gave it to him? Yeah, so, so like, awesome. I like went over and gave it to him. Dude, you would have thought I gave him like two billion dollars. Really? He was so stoked. It That's was cool. it was super cool. That's cool. Buy a leather claw hammer, trapper keeper. <laughs> we'll have to look into it. Yeah. So Malcolm's oh. printing. Most of his homies don't. Makes sense. I mean, who has a printer at home unless you're like have someone that works from home still? I <laughs> still so print. Plus my homies. Uh yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we have a printer. I don't know. You print at your really. house? Yeah, I don't April really use has it one much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't have a printer. April has a printer. Yeah, Lauren uses a printer I mean, at just, home. I wouldn't have one at home, you know, because we have one here. Right. Yeah, that's I it. I want to print something. I'll just like, print it here. We're like two blocks from here. Right. So I can just come up here and print something, so. What influenced the creation of Clawhammer Supply, Kyle? Uh, the YouTube channel would be Emmett and his uh, fascination with YouTube like 10 years before everybody else got into it and then also like brewing brewing tv like northern brewer and who else yeah. who, who are your favorite all-star old school brewers i mean brewing tv is probably obviously everybody's like yeah they're, they're the goat you know but there's still people in that you used to watch right yeah i mean dono still has like a channel he puts stuff on chip obviously has chop and brew they put stuff out on yeah um, but yeah it's funny because years ago i don't know if it's still a thing but they had like brew tubers and like on Wednesdays people would post videos this is years and yeah. years ago and yeah. um I would watch those yeah you were watching that before I ever even like watched anything on YouTube yeah yeah I was a pretty early adopter on YouTube yeah. I'd say I should have started a channel and, yeah that's and, true and you, know, you should have yeah but I I can barely now you're working function for the, now you're working for the man <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's true. <laughs> but, yeah, I live with Kyle in college. He's well aware. Yeah. It was it was a rough a rough stint. Yeah. So like we back in the day, a couple of times like sent Chip some uh, like beers and stuff, mm -hmm. just for funsies before we really knew him. That was yeah remember. before we even do brewing stuff. Yeah, yeah, we were into brewing. Yeah, because we were big fans of yeah what they do. Um, but they yeah, have... as far as Clawhammer Supply in general goes. Uh, we started, I, I built a copper still for myself and I had to buy a three foot by 10 foot sheet of copper, which was enough to make three stills. So I made two and sold them. And then I kept one for myself um, just because I had that extra copper. I had zero money at the time, but essentially my life savings, I spent on like I a sheet of, sheet of copper to make a still because I was an idiot. Uh, and then, yeah, I sold those two stills. It was like, at the time, I was like mountain biking and playing music mm -hmm. and n making no money doing any of those things. Right. And I really enjoyed, I mean, I enjoyed building the still just as much as I did mountain biking and playing music. I loved it. I was like, I loved it. Yeah. And I was thinking, wow, this, this is like a cool hobby that wouldn't t like consume all of my money. I could actually make money if I just built, kept building stills. So that's how the business was born. That was a long time ago. Yeah, Malcolm's, Malcolm, Malcolm, seen the old copper still videos. They're not all still up there, but a couple of them disappeared. A couple of them disappeared. <laughs> but yeah, that was like ten years ago. Yeah, if you're in the building stuff, those those copper stills are like really actually a cool like building project. Like, 
I'm not great at them. I've only built two over the years, but yeah. I just hung out with a buddy in the garage. It was before I even it, worked for you. I was just yeah. hanging out with a buddy in a garage, and we built one, and it was, it was actually super fun. Yeah, it is, it's still fun. Yeah, I mean, it's still even if you're not doing it, you know, you're just like hanging out with somebody. Yeah, and building it. it yeah, along with them. And then, oh, just I mean, drinking beers and and the copper ones are sweet for like decoration, like little one gallon porch. ones and stuff. Put yeah. some flowers in it for your lady. Right. Yeah, man, drink beers, whiskey, moonshine, uh, propane torches, what could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Wait a second, no way. Oh, Brucho, okay, I thought Brucho was saying that Gnome um, played claw hammer banjo. I was, gonna, I was gonna say, we gotta get together and play some banjo. To get yeah, a little warm once that kettle heats up. So what's uh what's going on? I remember hanging with Emmett when he was drafting the first panel. Oh, that's my buddy Dave. Oh, okay. Control Which panel is back the in the day. The, the huge the one. Brewing panel. Yeah. Yeah, like or our original the, controller. Yeah, it was like in a plastic. Yeah. Before the metal one, it was like in that. Remember, I had those. Yeah. Plastic pieces yeah, yeah, that plastic. I'd screw together. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's probably. I don't know, there's probably a hundred of those out there somewhere. Somewhere out in the wild. Yeah. Cool. So, you know, oftentimes we um, kind of cheat and do 30 minute mashes. We did a video a while back, or we did a test really, and we compared uh, specific gravity at like 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and the biggest gains were made between zero and 20 yeah. minutes. And then by 30, you were like 90 plus percent of the way there. Yeah. So we were doing, um, we were doing 30 minute mashes for most of our brew days for you know a long time. We've been doing that. But on these bigger beers, I don't know, we're we're doing a 60 today. Yeah. There's a lot of grain in there. Yeah, a lot of grain. And like those 30 minute mashes when we were filming them, also turned into 70 minute mashes by the time. You're taking B-roll yeah, and photos yeah, exactly. and messing around, so sure. it's like, you know, a lot of those were 30-ish minutes, but a lot of times, yeah, the stuff would run over, but yeah. not too much. The boils we were pretty consistent on because we didn't want to bitter bitter everything out. So. Yeah, yeah. It is prototype day here at Clawhammer. Yeah. Oh yeah, we Actually, got. We probably can't show it because I have a tape to the. Oh well, we they can imagine. It's <laughs> not really prototype. Every uh, secret. Here's our secret. Every day is prototype day. <laughs> so <laughs> nothing's ever done. The 120 controllers worked really well. We sold it for I don't know five years, yeah. something like that at this point. Mm -hmm. And one complaint that we've gotten over the years is just that. The case itself, especially on the bottom, will get hot when you use it. Right. Which makes sense because we use the case as the heat sink. So it's actually taking the heat that's generated inside the case and moving it to the outside. Yep. Um, but we decided in order, because they can get a little bit warm to the touch. So we decided to put like a small little computer fan yeah. in the side. Um, and we designed it in a way to, because fans don't fail, but if they do, it's nice to easily replace them. Right. Um, so it, it has, you know, like your normal laptop yeah. connector on it, so you can easily just swap it out. Um, That's a, the case with a lot of stuff in our controller. Yeah. Minus like the main board. Everything you know, else. If the power is switch goes bad, you can swap replace it out. the power switch. Yeah. If the, the, the probe. fuse housing, which has happened to people before, yeah. goes bad, you can swap the fuse uh, yeah. housing. Everything's pretty if, simple yeah, to computer, swap. Yeah, computer, fan, unplug it, plug a new one in. So they're, they're very repairable. And for years, we repaired uh, broken controllers actually for free. Yeah. Just recently, finally, we started charging a little bit of money it's, for and it. And it's basically enough to just cover shipping Yeah, back. it's like 25 I think or yeah, it's 50 20, that's 25 25 bucks, yeah. So, yeah, if you ever do have an issue, and obviously if it's within the first year, just let us know. Yeah, but, yeah, sure. Yeah, that after a year. Yeah. There's a year. But, but the fan upgrades, all the all the new controllers that ship, um, we've, we're now adding the fan to them, which it, it's not, I don't know if you can hear it. It, it's yeah. uh, it's not that loud. loud. I mean, it's not no. really loud at all. No. But um, like we film with it quite a bit, and right. we've been testing this for 
Ooh, look at that foamy boy. Yeah. We've been testing this for a while. Another thing you may notice is... Yeah, we've, we've been using it for a year. Yeah. We've had, a, we've had that for yeah. probably a year and a half. Probably, before we switched over. Yeah. And the other thing is we finally, um, after... <laughs> You know, we've talked about it for years, but um, Martin finally kind of pushed me over the edge from the homebrew challenge. Um, so we just made a 90 quick disconnect fitting for the top of the lid. Um, that's on the website now. Um, and it uh, basically just keeps this top post from kinking. So it's just a little bit cleaner. Um, you know, we kind of just always are making small improvements and small changes. It doesn't make a huge difference to functionality, but if you have the other one, it kind of loops up and over, and it can sometimes kind of kink. You just have to push. Once it has liquid in it, it's fine, but this just makes it easier. So I think that's probably the, the two things we've been prototyping, working on that are available now. Um, but we're kind of always tweaking and trying to improve things. So like we take feedback pretty seriously from customers yeah you know totally. martin was the one who kind of pushed us over the edge but it wasn't because he was a it, we never got a ton of feedback on it it was always one of those things i was like man yeah. i'd like to do that yeah and he was just someone he sent me a screenshot of a comment someone said he's like you need to put a 90 on there and i was like all right let's just do it right. like for whatever reason in that moment because it was easy to do which yeah. just hadn't you know he gave me the motivation so all right does a 10 gallon system come with hoses? Yeah, so if you're not familiar, this is our 10 gallon 120, the full system. Um, and it comes with everything, the hoses, the fittings, uh, the controller, the heating element, the power cord for the heating element to the controller, the basket, a hot basket, mm -hmm. a chiller, and a pump, and all the fittings. So right. it's basically everything you need, minus ingredients, and fermentation equipment. Yeah, some um, yeah hose for like some chilling water. Uh, garden, garden, garden hose. hose yeah, yeah, but it comes with all the yeah everything all the brewing need. hose yeah. and all the fittings and clamps and everything. So yeah, a larger brewing system. I think twenty gallons might be the largest. I mean, we'll never say no. But what James is asking, any plans in the future for a larger brewing system? Like what? What size batches are you trying yeah. to brew? Because What's the largest, I mean, what's the largest, so uh, if you're watching right now and you have a brew system, what size is it? Or if you have multiple, what size is yeah. your largest, like, you know, system, I guess. Yeah. And how would we break that, how would we like? Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're brewing, brewing three tier, you could have the same size kettle made brewing bigger batches, but right. I guess what size batches are yeah, you brewing? Yeah, like what's your max batch size without doing anything special? Yeah. Just like a single run through. So our 20 gallon system would do 10 gallons of beer. My man, that's so much beer. I don't know, it's just so much of one type of beer. For me now, yes. Yeah. Uh, even sometimes five gallons is too much for me now yeah. and I'll brew two and a half or right. three gallons. Me and, me and CH were talking about that. I did his live stream a couple weeks ago. And I was like, cause he was just like bummed. Cause he's like, man, I got five gallons of beer that I just can't get through. Cause you know, I don't have just, my boys. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, dude, right. I, was like, I was like, start brewing extract one gallon batches. Yeah. Like seriously, I was yeah. like, it's yeah, fun. That's true. It is it's fun. a six pack. Yeah. And if you know, you can play around and experiment, but um, 10 gallons. Okay. All right. So we got seven gallons. It holds seven gallons, John Bailey or the, the um, batch size is seven gallons. Nicholas, uh, five gallon, Gustavo, ten, uh, ten gallons. Oh man, forty gallons. Scold, forty gallons, Oof. bro. I wish you could put like pictures up in the chat. I'm also kind of glad you can't, but it'd be sweet. Yeah, see a picture of that. Yeah, it would be cool. Um, let's see here, fourteen to fifteen liters. Where's the Overland Africa? Can you do a conversion on that for us? Four gallons, seven gallons. So 20 gallon kettle. I don't know what I don't who who asked for the, the the bigger system. I forget. Brother John's asking how hot does the bottom of the pot get? Uh, 212 would be my guess when you're boiling. Yeah. Um, just because uh, what 212 at, at sea level. Yeah. Um, he's asking if you can brew on a wooden table. I, well, with an insulation jacket, I probably think yeah you probably could. Yeah, but. the our insulation jacket has a bottom on it, yeah. so. 
Um, and if you don't want to get an insulation jacket, just throw a piece of insulation down or yeah, we used to do a hot plate, like, yeah. you know, cutting board. Yeah. Something like just that. throw something on there. Yeah. Um, if it's just like a workbench you do work on and you don't really care about, it's not going to like catch on a fire or anything. Right. 20 uh, gallon blicking the kettles, 10 gallons, but split some with different hops. See, you know, I do like that idea. You brew a big yeah, batch. And then split it. And then split it, maybe do two different yeasts, yeah, something like put that. Put some fruit on one or yeah. age one on oak or, I get that, That that is cool. But then, I would, yeah, I guess I would just have to have a plan to get rid of that at the same time. Like either yeah, bottle true. it to give it to friends Party. or have p people over. Yeah. yeah. I think the only time we've, you know done really big batches like several times that we've done to film you know here yeah has been we don't tend to brew a whole lot of big batches because we already have so much beer yeah um but we did uh 20 no 10 gallons of the ipl yes indie pale lager yeah and canned a bunch of it and that was cool yeah yeah i, I think that's the move that got taken to a party yeah i think that's the move like if you're going to a festival or something like that just can a bunch or bottle right. a bunch cans obviously if you're going to a festival are a better move but right. Canners are expensive. Yeah. As an apartment dweller with a little space, I'd love a smaller system for like half gallon batches. Half gallon would be tough. You could use a hot plate and a, st you could do, you could honestly just use like a two gallon or three gallon like kettle for like pasta right. and, you, and just get a, get a, use a paint strainer bag. Honestly, if you're doing that small of batches and you can all grain in that easily that's probably what i would do if i wanted to go that small right because you you can't get an element under so but yeah stovetop yeah. all grain right heck yeah yeah um so the other question we have uh for everybody what up ch let's see, how, see let's see how long ch sticks around i'm gonna i'm gonna holler at everybody what's our, what's our timer we're 40 minutes ago um oh the other question we had for everybody is um what uh so if you're watching right now, just comment yes or no. Is there a homebrew shop? Is there a, a local homebrew shop within 10 miles of your house? Yes or no? Ten miles, and that would be ten miles. kilometers. We're gonna need overland's help. Dude, CH is what? Just popped in the chat and uh, dropped Drop. 10 bucks and left. All right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> See you, buddy. <laughs> CH is officially a crazy cat lady. So if anybody's not familiar with CH, he has the YouTube Casey. channel, yeah, yeah. Homebrew for Life. Yeah. Uh, great channel. His channel makes me laugh every time I watch in, it. In the happy hour. In the happy hour yeah, live so, stream, yeah. Yeah, he does a Wednesday stream every week and uh then which is really entertaining so we got a lot I, of yet we got a ton of yeses i reckon i recognize a lot of names in here and then uh homebrew for life um one of our favorite youtube channels hilarious videos really funny so yeah i'm gonna kind of count these up uh we got Commer the question uh, the, yeah was um yes or no do you have a homebrew shop where you can buy grains and whatnot within 10 miles of your house there's a lot of yeses Adventures in homebrewing brought out our big homebrew, leaving us nothing. So they bought them out and then closed them down and just took, like just basically took over the domain name. No, yes. Oh man, it's kind of looking 50-50. There are a yeah. lot of more yeses than I thought, but. Yeah. And I wonder if that, if having a homebrew shop nearby that makes it easier to brew, so you stick with it because you're not having to like order online and right. you could just pop in and grab stuff and you form a relationship, become friends with like the homebrew shop guys yeah. or girls. Like, because I've always lived in Akron, we've there's a couple like within 10 miles, yeah. And then Fort Collins, there were two, yeah, there two. One, I don't know if there's any left there. Used there used to be two here, yeah. And there's just one left well, here, there used to be three here, yeah. Uh, well, I guess there's the one in West Asheville, there was one downtown, and I does, think that's. Does that like Asheville place that does like supply. grow, like that does like grow yeah, stuff? Yeah, season. Do they still do ingredients? Yeah. Oh, okay, so there's two still. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we still have two. All right, we're gonna we're gonna go back and um, count these up. Are we not live anymore? I think we're not. Like on the, the chat. Oh yeah, yeah, we are. We are okay. Yeah. Event because adventures, 
Homebrew got bought out. Oh, sorry. Maybe we're not. I don't think we are. No. I think you just no. have to hit that blue button. Blue button? Oh, nice, dude. Look at you. I would have been scrolling like an idiot. Can the controller, heating element, etc., be adapted to fit a one gallon setup? <laughs> Maybe. Um, CH is quoting himself. It'll depend on the diameter of your kettle, um, but that's gonna be probably pushing it. One gallon's pretty small. But yeah, shoot me, you could always shoot us an email, info at Clawhammer Supply, and just send a picture in your dimensions, but you're probably better off with a hot plate setup on, the, on like a one gallon setup. Yeah. Um, but it's gonna depend on dimensions. A, will it fit this way and we have enough liquid to cover it? Mm -hmm. um, we have the malt miller. Dude, is this our, is this literally our brew sheet? Yeah. Looks we're good. not even, we're not even halfway through the mash and we're missing a jungle there. <laughs> yeah. This is what they all look like. Yeah. The trapper all, keeper idea. I could, we could print out a new one. have to happen. Yeah, we should get one. Do we sell in the UK? We don't uh, sell in the UK. It's something we would love to do. Um, and it's something we've talked about many a times um but we don't do it yet we have to kind of figure out regulations and all that stuff um but yeah that would be sweet to be able to do that the eu and the uk would be great yeah we're just two guys trying to figure out how to how to get by <laughs> <laughs> story of two guys who started at the bottom worked hard along the bottom and ended up at the bottom <laughs> Dude, CH man, dropping, dropping Lincolns now. Man. Uh, <laughs> Dino Nuggets. What yeast? We are. We're gonna use US 05. Let's pop it out. Actually, let it warm up. That's our. Oh shit! Did you put it back in? I got it out, man. I did. Okay. I thought you just forgot about her. No, I did. I, you were preempting. Yeah, the first time ever, I remember to get the yeast out. So but you know what? I only got one package out. So we're gonna do, this kit will come with two packets of yeast. One would be like really pushing it. So we just decided for the kit to include two. Um, you know, depending on your thoughts and all that stuff on pitch rates and all that, you could just pitch one, save one for a rainy day, uh, or probably recommend just pitching both though, just to be safe. Dude, um. So yeah, anybody just popping in, we're doing an Imperial Oatmeal Stout. And mainly because I realized that's all I want to drink anymore. Yeah. It's just stouts. No. And the, porters and. I mean, so time's gonna change in like what? And it's Two weeks. Time. You know what I mean? It's about to be dark at 5.30 p.m. I'm not excited. Yeah. Yeah, even so. last night I was just like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I'm like, it's six. And it's almost pitch black. Yeah. And I woke up and it was 35 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. It's the cold. Was, it's cold. Well, dark. The worst was last week. Yeah. It was starting to get cold. And I was just like, it's too early to turn the heat on. Like that mentality. Yeah. And like, I didn't really think about it. I didn't look at the weather. Sure. And I woke up. It was like 60 degrees in the house. So I was like, yeah. all right, we're yeah. going to turn the heat on. Dude, I never. Uh, so first of all, man. Uh, well, I should do this with beer. I'm going to finish this uh, vitamin so, water. Then I'm going to pour beer. But cheers to uh, brewing beers. Yeah, it's good to be brewing again. We're both drinking water. Yeah. But I'm going to finish this and drink a beer. But cheers to brewing beers. We we were just thinking about this earlier. This is the first five-gallon batch we've brewed just, you know. The two of us? The two of us here in the office literally, I think, this year. Yeah. Because we did, we did um, a beer with... Um, Dissolver. Dissolver. Check that out. We did a beer with White Labs. Check Here, that out. That was but, a live stream. Right. That was our first live stream. That was our first live stream. And then this. The reason being, our problem child. <laughs> okay. Keg. But we've, we, yeah. we've, uh, we've solved our problems. So. Um, yeah. And I don't know. Can they see the 50 gallons of cider back there fermenting and hanging out? Um, but yeah, we got, this is the, uh, the fermentation land for the um, cider. And it's kind of crazy because the mythical hammer yeast, which is a collaboration with White Labs, um, White Labs obviously making the yeast, our collaboration was just giving input 
on the yeast strain that we kind of like. Yeah, sure. And well, we told them what we wanted, and then they did a blend for us, like a special right. one. So, so we basically wanted like pressure fermentation, a, a, a yeast that'll do nice lager under pressure, accentuate the hops, but also yeah. can be used not on pressure. Mm. Um, but this is the only one still chugging along. I know, which is yeah. wild. It so is wild. Yeah, I'm excited. But we do have it under quite a bit of pressure. That, that's true too. The other ones so, are under less yeah. pressure or zero pressure. Yeah. Nick Spandinator dropping dollar bills, dude. We're Sweet. gonna buy some tacos with that. Do they get the icons when they do that? Um, if you become a member, you get the. Uh, dude, you guys need to become members and get the, the Oracle icons. icons. That's that's the move. Get something in return. But thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Let's see if I kill if I kill the audio by doing this. Let me know. I'm probably gonna kill the auto. But apparently there is, can they hear us still? Um, he just, the brew show just brewed with it. So, can you guys hear us? Okay. Sweet. So, apparently there is a pre-order for the Mythical Hammer yeast on the White Labs yeast man site, I believe. So, I don't have the link yet, but you could uh, Google Mythical Hammer White Labs yeah. and see if you can find a link. I could probably try that too. Um, if somebody actually could find that on their site and pop it in. If, if it's, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a, uh, a link for it, but I think the official sale is, is in the next couple of weeks, but yeah. we just want to make sure people buy it. So. Cause it's a cool yeast. We've, we've been really happy with it. We're going to be drinking, um, drinking on the beer that we brewed with white labs when they were here. Yeah. Um, oh, also, yeah, we're gonna, yeah. Our white labs beer is done. It's been done for a minute, but it's really good. I tried some last night. Um, this is it. WLP 808 mythical hammer. And then we have all, they gave us a bunch of misprint stickers, not a bunch, but handful i'm thinking we put these in the uh maybe just like drop them in some i don't know some orders or something well, that'd be cool yeah i don't really want to, i'd say i oh, will send them to people in the chat um that won't happen if we don't put your that. yeah, that's, yeah first of all that's not going to happen second of all we'll give him the sam and he, yeah. can, he can randomly don't throw them in orders in the chat. <laughs> yeah or if you how about this next five people that become members get it there we go there you go <laughs> Uh, you gotta come pick it up. <laughs> you, you gotta remind me. Planning my next brew day, it's gonna be an Irish stout. You convinced me to join the dark side. Nice. It's that time Sweet. of year. Or well, at least in this hemisphere, it's that time of year. All right. Irish stout. Go that route. Yeah, was that a Tums? Or a. This, it's called Noon. This guy? Yeah. Noon. It's just like. Kind of looks like. Hydration tablet. The. Um, and acid tablets? Yeah, yeah, Tums or something like that. Yeah, yeah it, does, it kind of tastes like that too. Gotcha. Honestly. How do you become a member? I don't know. There should be a membership button. I don't know, a subscribe button? Dave, if you figure it out, let me know. I, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, who's brewing today? Anybody? Probably not too many people. Well, it's Thursday. Mm -hmm. She's taking Friday off. I just remember our other prototype, um, piece of prototype equipment. Okay. We're using a prototype basket. So if you have plans to maybe like watch this stream for a while, then leave, uh, I'm just gonna let you know right now that you probably should stick around until we, at least until we pulled this basket out because um, yeah. we had a new prototype basket made. Somebody made it for us actually. and. We do not like it. We will not be selling it, but we're, we're using it in this brew day here yeah. anyway. Our biggest fear is that um, when you pull it out, like the parts can snap. It shouldn't, but just, you know, whatever. It may. It, it might. Yeah. So 100% we're not using this, but we did want to just, we had it here, so we figured we'd test it out. So anyway. Basically testing new handle design. Yeah, hand, a new handle design. Yeah, with. Uh, probably the biggest grain bill we've done in a five gallon in a long, a long, while. long time. Yeah. In a pulley. So. The, the black IPA recipe kit Don't we sell anywhere. too is a pretty solid grain bill. They're oh both, yeah, what they're is both, that? That's probably 18? Close probably, to yeah. Maybe. They're both pretty big. Because yeah, uh, we were putting it, just putting it together and like, oh, you guys, 
You really like the uh, the big grain bills. I was like, yeah. yeah, apparently we do. Oh, you know what? I should put this kit. I didn't even put the kit in the um, description of this video. Oh, well. That's how I do, man. Oops. I'm drinking a three-year-old beer that I have no idea what it is. Hilarious. I like it. What color is it? Green. Might want to throw that one out. You're making kit. Cool. Waiting on Amazon for yeast, then brewing a double to be ready by midwinter. Ooh, nice. What yeast are you using? Does ye does Amazon sell liquid yeast? Are you getting dry yeast? And then I'm trying to read the screen, but oh, sorry, man. it's all good. Man, it's smelling good though. All right, so if y'all want to brew this beer, I mean, we're, we're gonna have the recipe on our website at some point. Yeah, there's a blog page for yeah. it already. And we'll have a, we'll have like a full video and, a, and a, a, yeah, there's a blog page. So you can see all the ingredients. However, if you want to use exactly what we're using and you don't have a homebrew shop nearby, here's a link, you can get the kit from us. We make like virtually no money selling the, the beer ingredients kits, but our thought is this. Not everybody has a homebrew shop near them. Not everybody's like really, some people get tripped up on making a recipe. So like, that's something that people say like, I don't know how to make a recipe or you know, whatever. Yeah, I mean, when you're first learning, like yeah. it is confusing. It is confusing. So yeah, here this way you can just click a button and. Um, oh, I remember the yeah. first time I went to a homebrew shop and I was with a buddy, I was a Brad and he was just like, yeah, you need this, 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 and this. And I just remember asking, my first question was like, how do you know? Yeah. Because I was just so bewildered by, because I had no idea what a specialty grain was or right. you know, yeah. what flavors came from what or what a base malt was. So right. when you first get in, like it is nice just to be able to like, okay, here's a kit. Like it's a good, it's a tried and true recipe. It's going to be good right. versus yeah. like, and I remember too, when I first started designing recipes years ago, I'd always be like, well, more is better. Yeah. And you'd be like, I'll just put double the hops. Yeah, right. Which is like bittering hops is yeah, like the worst right. thing you can do. <laughs> and you know, they'd be so like some of those early beers that we, you're experimenting with. You learn a lot, but it's like, oh, this is not yeah. even drinkable. Or you use more expensive aroma hops for your bittering additions. And yeah, you don't, yeah, yeah. And you have to add a ton to make the IBUs work out. We, we do that. We used to do that when we were just doing like these single hop IPAs mm -hmm. and people would, you know, call us out, give a shit for that. But like the whole point of it was a single, a single hop. hop is a single hop. Right. So we know it's more expensive, but it wasn't, it's not that much money. I mean, at the end and of the day, yeah. especially if you're buying hops in bulk, I mean, that's, that's probably the, you know, if, if you are buying online, like yeah. buy your hops in bulk from right. directly from a farm. I mean, you could pay like, because when they have sales, you can get such yeah. a good deal on them. Right. I think brew shops are not fit for home, home brewers. I mean, being very over, overwhelmed when I first entered one, like they judge me for being a newbie. See, that's a bummer, man. I think that all that's probably just going to be dependent on the home brew shop. Um, luckily, the ones that were near me when I was first getting into it were super supportive and super cool. Um, but I can definitely picture the type of person that you're, you're, you're describing. Um, so that, that is unfortunate. Because especially if you work at a homebrew shop or own a homebrew shop, you think you'd be, you want to be very encouraging to keep people coming back. Yeah. But it's such a, it's like music stores can be similar to that too. Yeah. You know, they can sometimes can have a vibe that maybe isn't the most, you don't feel welcome, but they are welcome. Might just be, right. you might be reading it weird, but yeah. Um, all right, dude, I finished my waters. Yeah, I missed my brewing in the worst minutes. way. To bulk, that makes sense. Like if you don't have a homebrew shop, buy 50 pound sacks and store it. Yeah. But yeah, that is a yeah. bummer. It would be, well, we, Yeah. I would. it would be hard to not have a homebrew shop because there's so many times it's like, oh, I'm just gonna run over there. Yeah, and, and you'd and really grab. have to plan ahead. You would have, which, 
yeah, I'm dealing with restaurant. Super good at that. I know that Martin, for example, um, Humber Challenge and now Brewlosophy, he has he's fully stocked, not with hops per se, but he definitely has a bunch of he had definitely has multiple types of base malt and specialty oh. grains. Yeah, he's got um, I don't whole, know like he's got a huge basement though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I mean he's he's in a situation where he has the space for it too. Yeah, got yeah. your first fifty five pound bag, sweet. Yeah, it's nice to have a 55 pound bag of base malt around because you go through that quick. I mean, a couple beers and you're through that base malt. To Africa Overland Adventures, I'm feeling it, man. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna drink a beer. Yeah, I'm um, down. Are you? Are you? Are you able to drink? I'm allowed. To, oh yeah. Okay. I'm allowed to drink. We are brewing with the 10 gallon 120 system, so the uh, 1650 watt. Uh, element in this in this bad boy and we're mashing at 154 today and we're brewing uh, an imperial stout oatmeal stout so decent amount of oatmeal decent amount of oatmeal decent amount of uh, flaked oats in it yeah so the pet can pet food containers um, are, are great for bulk range is what we use Oh, ours is, I think we moved it out of the way for filming. But yeah, we use that for all of our base malts. Um, works really well. I think Martin has a, a really good video on storage on, on his channel. Um, for his base malts, he's got those big ones. Then he has some clear ones. Um, he's got everything laid out really nice. We had a homebrew shop, but due to a lack of homebrewers, they shut down. See, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, I guess, have you guys noticed a decline in homebrewing? Is that something people have noticed over the last few years? Or seems like obviously people that are into it are into it, but I don't know if new people are getting into it like they were. Um, I'm not sure how, how that works. What's being poured today? We are gonna be drinking the Mythical Hammer, uh, the beer we brewed with the Mythical Hammer. The uh, the White Labs collab. Yeah. Just be clear. It's an IPL, I believe, if I remember. Yeah. Uh, no, it's a cold. Um, oh. Cold IPA. Don't See, I don't remember. Yeah. It's a cold IPA. Yeah, and I. See, I don't know what the difference is between I cold IPA really and like, an IPL. I didn't. Um, it hasn't been cold crashing that long. Yeah. We had it under pressure at room temp. But for some reason, there's like no help. Bruno, that's, yeah. So Bruno's saying he buys mo mostly liquid yeast. He makes starters, keeps half of them for later use. So I don't need to buy yeast too often. That, that's a good move for sure. And it beats having to clean the yeast afterwards for sure. Huge decline in my area. Three of the local clubs died out. Brew shop closed. Brother John, where are you located? A lot of friends are moving to bourbons, drinking bourbons, brew solo. Uh, cold IPA uses an adjunct in more whirlpool hops. Okay, so we use rice in that. Is that right, Kyle? Um, oh, I got the recipe right here. Yeah. My memory is not well, what it I once mean, was. Somebody's saying that co the cold IPA is something specific because of you. Because you add more. You, well, you start hunting around yeah, so we had the, the internet and flaked rice is what we used. Yeah, okay, flaked rice. Um, all right, so anyway, this is a cold IPA uh, that we did with the White Labs, and it's pretty, pretty good. Did someone move the camera? I did. He did. Kyle moved the yeah, camera. Yeah, I'm trying to show you me uh, pouring this beer. I don't know if it's going to work out. He but. wanted to get a sweet pour shot. Yeah. This is the, I mean, dude, this is the first good beer we've had on tap. We for, haven't had a beer on yeah, tap. Yeah, we haven't had a beer on tap in so long. Yeah. You want me to pour you one? Uh, yeah. Cool. we Will do. That'd be great. So this is a cold IPA. Yeah. <clears throat> Shout out to... East Woodland Brew Co., who uh, gave us these glasses that I'm pouring Emmett's beer in. A local homebrew store closed a few years ago, and the homebrew, 
clubs shut down around the same time. That's unfortunate. Yeah, it's that's uh, that's a bummer. I'm excited. I haven't t tested this one yet. There you go, man. Thanks, man. I'm gonna put the camera back. <clears throat> I've been on. Uh... So this was brewed with the mythical hammer yeast, which you may be able to pre-order now. Which, um, if you're not, if you're just tuning in, is a, a yeast collaboration with White Labs. Uh, obviously, White Labs made it, and we just kind of gave them input on what strains we were kind of looking for, what the end goal was, right, Kyle? Yeah, totally. And um, it's a cold IPA as opposed to a hot IPA. Yeah, you know, we usually brew like really Ooh. sweltering IPAs. And we fermented this under pressure at room temperature with the, uh, with the new keg. It smells really nice. The aroma is definitely there on the uh, on the nose, which is sweet. <laughs> and we also, I think we did apartment brewer style with the Whirlpool arm and went full send in the kettle on this. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, it's got great, great aroma. Mm -hmm. and like a, a decent amount of aroma. Ooh. Dude, that's nice. What hops are we using this? This is really good. It's really good. It's like kind of on the low side carbonation wise. It is. Uh, we used um, one ounce of. We did. Did we do all bittering editions? What did we do here? No, no, right? Do we? Didn't, I thought we did like all whirlpool editions. <coughs> oh, here we go. Maybe we want like one small bittering and then a ton mm. of whirlpool. Yeah, we did a thirty minute boil. We used Centennial for the boil edition. And then it was a mix of Citra and Simcoe in the Whirlpool. Um, I think so two, four, six ounces between the two. Yeah. All in the Whirlpool. Yeah. And then we Whirlpooled for a half hour. Yeah. Um, but this is delicious. Yeah, this is great. So uh, I, I didn't start. I did a 40 PSI like quick car, but it's less than 24 hours. I didn't do that until like late last night. So. I mean, it's it's. That is fine by me, mm. even on the low carbonation side. Yeah, I could have done it. If Ooh. it would have transferred, I could have done it in about three minutes. But yeah. this, is a, this is one of the beers that we fermented under pressure, just like this guy. Oh, I got a chance to focus on this. We fermented it under pressure and then um, did not take it out of the, we didn't transfer it out of the keg. So we fermented it in the keg and just let it sit and then i just popped the entire keg with the spunding still on it and the kegerator floating dip tube floating dip tube in it yeah so it's you, still sitting on the yeast right yeah. now our small our small spundings fit in our kegerator okay with a decent size collar in it but it's there's a ton of room so i, I can't see how this with the spunding is not going to fit in some of these like keys she saw the spunding valve on it i well so then i i did um and we hadn't tested this yet i did a Quick carb. I did. Uh, sorry, I did like a overnight, you know, pressure at 40 psi. So you set this, and that about the max that would take yeah. is like 40 psi. Gotcha. So I ended up taking it off and gotcha. purging it. Um, okay. Yeah. So you could transfer it if you didn't want to open it at all. Yeah, but anyway, long story short, this beer is still sitting on the yeast. It's been sitting on the yeast since we brewed yeah, it. Yeah, it's been sitting on the yeast since we brewed it. So, um, and I, I think you know we've talked about this before, but. Um, oh, man. Yeah, we did a bunch of research, like kind of when we were making the kegs, and discovered that yeast autolysis, what everybody's worried about getting their beer off the yeast for, doesn't really happen unless the yeast is like a high temperature or pressure, or the beer sits on a really long time. And, if, and then what Chris White says in like the yeast book, mm -hmm. it's like water hops malt yep. yeast book, um, is that a lot of times homebrew homebrew beer actually benefits from. Unless you, you know, go too far, but it could oftentimes benefit from staying on the yeast a bit longer than people leave their beer on the yeast, especially somebody like me. It'll I'm impatient, it yeah, and it cleans up, you know, imperfections and whatnot. So. Yeah, and I think a lot. I mean, I'm not a yeast expert, but like yeah. stuff I've read and heard is like, like in commercial settings where you have all that pressure on the yeast, yeah. that's where you can run into issues with it. But yeah. five gallons in a keg. Yeah, this I'm, is. I mean, I would. 
sell this at a brewery and charge six dollars like everybody else. I charge eight. I charge nine. But then uh, if I came to the same brewery as a customer, I would complain. Mm -hmm. uh, so does anyway. pressure fermentation really help? Um, well, I mean, we fermented this yeah. in the high 70s. Yeah, dude. The, yeah, this, yeah. Definitely Maybe like in the 70s. 80s. Yeah, 75. And there was a point at which it got it like up to 80. I can't remember why. It was, it was like 80 degrees. Because Kyle in here. doesn't get hot. Uh, yeah. I walked in, I'm like, dude, <laughs> it is 82 degrees in here. What is happening? Anyway, um, yeah, and it's clean. There's like no fruity, there's no super weirdness. Clean. It's super clean. Uh, so. Hmm. That's probably. Yeah, dude, that's great. That's I mean, it's a cold IPA. Yeah, I mean, it's very lagerish, which I like. Yeah. Very clean. Um, yeah, I, I'd say if you haven't brewed that, and this, we're not going to take credit for the recipe. We just scaled the trial beers that White Labs did with the yeast. We just scaled it to five gallons. So, I mean, it's a simple recipe. It's literally. Uh, we use river bend malt, flaked rice, and a little bit of carafone. So I mean, it's yeah. it's there's a lot of room in here to taste any kind of defect. So I'd say we did. I feel pretty good. Probably, sorry, I missed it. What yeast did you guys use? The mythical hammer. Mythical hammer, which is again, we don't we're not making any money from this. We're just we thought it was cool. Mm -hmm. That White Labs, oh, we kinda, yeah. I don't know, we kind of pitched it to them or they pitched it to us a long time ago. And then just kind of joking. Yeah. Like, they'll never, uh -huh. why would they do that? Yeah, and then we circled back on it and um, we just told them what we wanted, what we wanted for like a yeast for pressure ferment in a keg mm -hmm. and they gave it to us. Dude, it's And sweet. they let us help them name it. Yeah, uh, it's, it's super cool. Yeah. And then they did a bunch of trials with it, dialed everything in and then we did the live stream. So if you haven't watched that, there's a lot of um, yeast knowledge that's dropped in there by Devin. Very, very smart. Um, so I don't know if he's QC still or what, but I mean, he's smart. Yeah, he's there, he's, he worked in their lab yeah, he's for a long time. Yeah, he's a lab man. Yeah, and he's the head of their education and engagement. That's what it like is, that. yeah. But super smart, he drops a lot of knowledge. Um, but I'm excited for people to get their hands on that yeast too. Yeah, totally. So we'll, we'll hopefully. Did anybody find that? Yeah, did anybody look for that link? Dave, how about you find that link, buddy? The WLP008 Mythical Hammer. All right, I'll, tr I'll try to find it. Okay. But yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed by it. And we, like I said, we fermented that under pressure, really kind of warm. It's super clean. We did a bunch of testing, and White Labs did testing, I believe, unpressurized as well. So it's kind of a universal clean, clean boy. And it's it's a lager yeast blend, um, which is why it tastes like a lager to me. It tastes really nice. Yeah. So it's, it's a, a cold blend. IP. It's just like cold, like um, it's clean a cold fermenting. IPA. Pressure, um, pressure capable um, lager yeast, and then Dude. there, I can't remember what the other yeast was, but essentially it's not thylized, but it's like something that I, I'm, I don't believe it is, but it's something that um, is really, you know, accentuates hop character. It's, yeah, it's, dude, it's a treat. So we fermented this lager. Warm due to the due to the pressure. I think that's kind of the the benefit of, of fermenting under pressure. But man, couldn't be more excited about this. You know what I should do is I should look up the what's it called? Um, uh, w. Oh. It's and yeah, it's WLP eight oh eight. Yeah, I'll look for that and then just pulls up the Oktoberfest on Untapped. There we go. There it is. Hammer, boom. Sweet. All right, guys. Uh, highly recommend for buying real. this. This is it's really cool. Um, I'd love to see them just like put this, you know, into the regular rotation. We, we need to get the sales up so they'll keep it. Yeah, and if yeah. you have a homebrew shop, maybe see if when they're doing their next White Labs order, to uh, pick some of this stuff up. 
um, I told our homebrew guy to pick up some packs to for his store, so. Yeah, buddy. Super excited to bottle my first attempt at home brewing with an IPA and my little bucket for my sweet. I think that's how we all started. It's how I still brew a lot, honestly. Um, nothing wrong with that at all, except I, I don't do a lot of IPAs. <clears throat> so we got a link for everybody for the yeast. Check that out. Um, man, super impressed, super stoked. And if you get the yeast, highly recommend the recipe. <clears throat> um, you can find that on the live stream and we should probably publish it on the website too, because it's really nice. Yeah, definitely. I'm gonna do that for sure. It's super simple though. I mean, it's not, we're not breaking any ground with it. It's just super clean, super nice. It's one of those things, you know, when you, I feel like I'm always the most critical of beers we brew. Like yeah. of, of stuff you make, like, right. I think you're gonna be your harshest critic. And usually there's something where I'm like, eh, it's good, but, or like, this is really good, but, you know, but this I'm like, that I don't. There's no but really. It's like this is solid. This is good. Yeah, it's solid. It's really good. Which is a, which is a good feeling. Yeah, dude. Cheers. Cheers yeah. Dude. We'll we're, give Devin all. The we're credit. back, baby. <laughs> we'll give Devin all the credit for that. How's Ross doing? Oh yeah. He seems to be doing dude. really well. He's out in uh, Fort Collins. Ross is living everybody's best life. Yeah. If you're not living your best life, don't worry. Ross is doing it for you. Yeah. He's, he's got an attitude like I wish you could just buy. Yeah. <laughs> he's like infectious, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. But yeah, he seems to be doing good. He's got an Instagram. I think it's open to public. It's worth following because yeah, yeah. he's Follow just a great, great, just, great dude. I think it's like, I'm Ross or hi, I'm Ross. Let me look it up real quick. Back to work. All right. See you tonight. Yeah, so the brew show is heading out. Thanks for popping in. He's, he's going to be doing a live stream tonight. Um, I believe he said, so someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but it was. Uh, I thought it was 9.30. It was, yeah, 9 Eastern, something Pacific. Yeah. Someone can <clears throat> correct us. Is it true that Ross has never been in a car? <laughs> um, <laughs> Some say. So, all right, I've known Ross for, see, I met Ross for the first time in, I think, 2015. And this is not an exaggeration. I've seen Ross in a car. In almost 10 years, I've seen him in a car behind the wheel one time. That's a weird, it's a weird sight. One time. He was dropping barrels off. Uh, oh, so then there was a two because I saw him when he wanted us to go get a like slab of a bowling alley. Oh, that's right. Like an old bowling alley. First bar in his basement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, it's, it's a rare sight. I think if he's going beyond 200 miles, he'll get in an automobile. Yeah. So yeah, Ross has got this, um, he's got a bowling alley workbench in his um, basement, but then he also has a van, like a kind of, it's not a camper van, it's just like a, like a Ford Econoline it's, kind of van. It's a construction van. Yeah, and it, there has a little like kind of desk kind of bench area and there also a bowling alley. Okay, gotcha. So. Yeah, they, t they took that out of one of the bars in town, right? Or did he take that out of the bowling alley? No, the bowling alley. Yeah. Yeah. So if you ever come to Asheville, um, it's uh, Skylanes. Dude. Right, they got, Skylanes is the by your house? Yeah, they have the mural. Yeah, the, you can't miss it, the Big Lebowski. They have um, a sweet The Big Jesus Lebowski. is on the side Dude, and the it's Big so Lebowski. Good. Should put Walter on there, but. You always see people like taking pictures out because it's so good. I mean, it's so good. Yeah. And you got Rocky's Hot Chicken right next to it, so. So, uh, shoot, we're, we've got four minutes left. Oh, sweet. Heck yeah. Look at us. Gnome, uh, yeah, man, kegs are sexy. And here's what we're going to do. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have nine batches of um, cider in, well, we have eight in the kegs, and then we have a ninth. Well, actually, we have ten separate batches of cider, and we haven't named any of them yet. All we have is the yeast 
and some some details on how the process went and our how our the how we were vibing that day. And what I want to do later is actually just crowdsource names for all these. Yeah, some have fruit. Yeah. Um, besides yeah. apples. <laughs> yeah. Fruits and apple emmet. But yeah, with names would be great. Yeah. Um, in, in fact, while CH is still here, uh, my 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 boy Boone helped me name this um, this White Labs beer because uh, he's part of the inspiration for the concept of uh, it being like a like a Minecraft hammer. But it's called Nether Beer, and it's uh, yeah, mythical hammer called IPA. That's about the only thing we have on tap, minus oh, so we have. Um, Oh, the, what's that one? Miss Hardy, it's mom's milk stout. <laughs> and then uh, Boonie Boy wrote balls for Kyle on the bottom there last night. Balls beer for Kyle? Balls beer? Yep. It's a good name. Yep. It's I like making it. Making me proud. Um, dude, that's super good. Yeah, so we'll have some, we'll definitely have some cider on tap. We'll have this on tap in a couple of weeks, so. The, the cider live really helped me because I'm making a brandy. Oh, hey now. Uh, apple, pressing apples, man. Uh, I got in that live stream some folks said they're going to send pictures of their like pneumatic presses. Like, yeah. And I got some pictures. So I think next year we'll, oh, we'll yeah, go sure. that, that way. Just looks a lot easier. Just literally just crush them. So, right. Well, we got one minute left. How about this? Should we get a mash temp hydrometer out and do a little mash temp? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, gravity reading? Yeah. We have a I'd like to. I'd that? like to see where we're at. All right. Oh, do we get any hooks over there? I think that's the one thing we neglected. Yeah, to grab. we have some. I use the garbage disposal. I've seen videos of that, too. That's actually a really good idea. Garbage disposal for dumping uh, corn the down apples, it. The apples into. <laughs> yeah. So we made a heavy, a beer with a heavy percentage of a corn. A lot of corn. A lot of corn years ago. Beer. It was a beer. And it had, I don't know, 90 to 100% corn. <laughs> and it was all flaked. And it was in a house Kyle was renting at the time. And uh, we just thought it'd be a really good idea to just shove all that corn down the down Dude, the sink disposal. At the point at the point in time, I just didn't. We I don't know. I don't know what was going on in my life that at that <laughs> point, but I didn't consider throwing it in the trash or like outside. We're putting it in our compost. Right, right. you have, have a compost, compost pile. Well. Yeah, down the disposal was like 15 pounds of corn. Because yeah, we only had like a tiny trash can in that house like it was like that big and we didn't really generate a whole lot of trash at that point but i was like we can't put this in the trash Dude. But i didn't even consider that yeah it was just the automatic we're gonna put this down the garbage disposal and like 300 dollars later we got it back out <laughs> <laughs> we didn't exactly. the plumber did the plumber did oh man i'll never forget that yeah but all right so um let's do like a gravity reading so you want to you want to fill this guy up yeah. We have a hot glove. Hot glove? Oh, let's I think I put them away. If you could do the pump, I'll. Can you do the pump in? Oh, sure. Yeah. You got her? Yeah. All right. Cool. Just got worn everywhere. Did we? Yeah, that was a bad uh, team. Sometimes teamwork makes the dream work, but... Sometimes. Oh, yeah, it is everywhere. Other times it just gets wart everywhere. Oh. That's why we have sponges. Yeah. All right, so we're going to do, um, we're gonna do a pre-boil gravity, and uh, this is how that works out. If you're uh, the kind of guy who is into this kind of thing, definitely do a pre-boil gravity. If this seems overly complicated to you, that's because it actually is. Just really, so yeah. So don't worry about it. I just want to make sure for the kit 
we're in the ballpark of where I want to be for right. folks making it. But yeah, it's one of those things. I don't know. You can nerd out and so this is calibrated for what temperature? 155. Dude, perfect. It's yeah. How much of a mess do you think I'm gonna make? Um, here, how about this? Let me give you a little tray thing to put that in. A little tray? Yeah. So CSCH, thanks for popping in, buddy. All right, I'm making a lot of noise here, but <clears throat> here's a tip. When it comes to homebrewing, you need one of two things. <clears throat> if, you're, um, have, if you have a spouse. And you're you brewing need, You need a way to prevent house. messes, or you need a good marriage counselor. And this is a temperature, a mash calibrated? What is it? How do they word that? Yeah, just mash temp uh, hydrometer. Yeah, so calibrated to take measurements at 155 degrees. So we'll be pretty close. We're at 154. So I'm not even going to try and do the math on that. And we are at 1070. Full to 1072. I think 1072. All right, 1072, and our target. Oh no, Kyle. What? 1071. Oh my gosh. So we gotta just dump can't, it down the garbage disposal? Cancel, cancel the kit. Cancel the kit, yeah, so. This. Sweet, so we're like a 0 .1, 0 .01 over? Yeah, so perfect. So pretty much nailed it. Yeah, yeah. so that, right. that, again, if you're, especially oh. if you're bringing a kit, there's really no reason Dude. to take a reading, but... Summer George. We might as well save that, huh? Pop it back in. coming up Millhouse. Um, yeah. Be cool to kind of... Let's just taste it later. Since you want to taste it? Since it hops in yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Not really right now, but... Yeah. All right, so we're going to... The mash is done. We just mashed for 60 minutes, and we're going to go ahead. I just killed the pump. And we're gonna go ahead and pull the grain basket. I can't lift anything today, so Kyle's gonna either lift it and I'll do the hooks, or we, we have a we got a pulley yeah, up there let's too. Let's do a pulley because again, it's prototype day. This is a prototype basket that we are not using. We're not gonna, we're not happy with the the way this basket turned out, and uh, it's because. I feel like there's a safety issue with it potentially. It's just not built well enough. Where's so. the uh, case for the hydrometer? Um, did you put it up in that window? Yeah, I did, yeah. So, okay. I'm just gonna use the pulley, so I need that. Um, I need this guy. Gosh, do I, I'm, just, I'm just gonna use my hands. Yeah, I just lift it out like a man. Yeah, let's be a man. Like a man. I'm gonna lift that over here, up higher real quick. Okay, cool. All right, so. And we have hooks over there? Yeah, I got them. Okay. So the, um, if you never, if you're like new to brewing and if you have one of our systems, if you close the ball valve at the, on the outlet of the kettle, it actually will kind of create a vacuum and warp, will not fly out of your, um, the end of your lid. So as long as you do that, I guess you can't see it now, but as long as you do that, you can just set the lid down. And you probably don't want to drop it on the floor, but. And then, okay, let me get these ready. Yeah. You, you got muscles from Brussels. Dude, I just, That's I what mean, you train for every day. I've been training for this all my life. I mean, we could just drop the pulley down, but. Yeah, it's true. I did. I did throw that refractometer in the trash because it was garbage. There's, you have to do so much to make them like accurate. Yeah. But the, we have, we have plenty of them. I mean, they, they work for like a quick spot check, but, and again, for homebrewing, you know, but I'd rather just use a hydrometer. They're cheap. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So if you don't know what we're talking about here, 
Um, refractometers are difficult to get good readings from because you have to do like several points of calibration to get them to work right versus, <clears throat> versus a hydrometer, you're just looking at one. And then like the turbidity and the color of the beer plays a, makes, it, makes a difference as well. Oh my God, this is terrifying, oh God, man. That is terrifying. I hate this. Why did we decide to use this basket? That was you. That was me. Yeah. How about this? Give me that. You just got to this guy. push your force out. I mean, it's crimp, but not well. I'll get that. I'll get that. I just want to get away from it. Yeah, well, it's going to be right in my yeah. face. So, I, anyway, prototype just, can you just day pull at out Hammer. when you do it? Yeah. Okay. It's prototype day at Climber. We're using a crappy basket design that we. <gasps> no, it's come, It's slipping out, really? dude. Yes. No, it's not. No, it's, it's pinched there, man. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I thought it was coming out right in my face. Because this side's not moving, that side was moving. Yeah, no. Do you think that's going to be pinched enough? I don't know. So there's like one shitty weld on it. Dude. We have like very specific, nice mechanical engineering drawings for this basket, and this prototype that was given to us is absolute garbage. It is garbage. So don't worry. Yours won't, won't come yeah, with this. This will never make it into a brew system. This is a one of one right here, and. It's terrifying. <sighs> I think Kyle wanted to use it just in case it, it breaks. He's got a sweet video of me for my lawsuit. Yeah. Dude, my worker's I'm cop claim. Finger under there. Yeah, okay, I appreciate that. Oh. Get the oh surface God, tension. This is so heavy. This, I think you got the surface tension. There it is. Got it. Oh, thanks. <clears throat> thanks. Thanks for not killing me, too. Oh, yeah. Oh. No, I, I'm sure I could have done that normal, normal yeah. way, but I just this, didn't this want was to be that close This was to sketching it. me out. Uh, it's so infuriating when that happens. But we are going to cheat a little bit. And the recipe is actually designed this way. Um, we're, I'm, I'm all about saving time on brew day. So this recipe is designed for a 30-minute boil. Oh, I wanted, it is. Uh, yeah, I oh, wanted to minute boil. Got I wanted it, to yeah, do yeah. a sixty-minute mash just to get. It's a big grain bill. Right. So uh, I was like, you know, it's worth worth the time. You could probably do a thirty-minute mash. You're gonna have a little bit less efficiency. Not the end of the world. You'd probably be at ten sixty-nine. Take it um, easy. And then we're gonna boil for thirty minutes. And if you wanted to boil for sixty minutes, you could. Right. Just don't put the hops in until thirty-minute mark. Um, Someone's asking to do the Martin King lean. Um, not for this guy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we need all the support we can get. Um, and while that's draining, I'm actually going to turn the heat up to 100% of power. Um, and if you're not familiar with electric brewing or um, our controller, basically during the mash, we're on PID mode, so it's just maintaining a set point. And then during the boil, we just switch it over to manual or percentage of power mode and just turns the element into 100% of power. And then on the 120 system, you're going to have it on 100% the entire time. Um, and the 240, you'll have it 100% until it's up to boil, then you're going to drop that down to like 50. Because um, if you boil with 100% on the 240 controller, you're going to boil off like half your beer. <laughs> so. But 100% on the, the 120, and we'll bring this up to boil. And uh, yeah, so the, we got the mash done. I feel like this is the easy part, and now it's like. Now we have to actually do work. Now you actually have to do work because you yeah. have to remove the basket, add hops, yeah. transfer it to a keg. It's a lot of work. But. I'm usually kind of somewhat um, angry about the winter coming around but this makes me excited i like this you know yeah. like i'm definitely look, gonna be looking forward to this i like drinking beer in the winter i like brewing beer in the winter i drink more beer in the winter than yeah. the summer because it's dark yeah especially dark beers yeah yeah it's dark and there's now. more and there's more dark beers available yeah so um what i, I went to the whale last night before yeah. before that show yep and uh, I hadn't been in. I've been in there, but I've been in there when it was busy, and it was pretty dead last night. Mm -hmm. Now it's with Lauren, 
yeah. and uh, ordered my drink. And I was like, all right, we're good, we're good. And then the bartender looks at me, he's like, you still recovering from St. Patrick's Day? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, nah. I'm like, we're good. Yeah. And uh, so what happened is after work, we went up there yeah. and drank until they closed at like 12 or one or whatever. And they're in that dead zone of cell phone coverage. Oh yeah, sure. So we're trying to get an Uber. We were Wait, both, this is last night? This is St. Patrick's Day. Oh, got it, yeah. So this is in March. Yeah. And, oh wait, uh, he remembered He you. remembered, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just because, because we were like kind of stumbling around, not stumbling, but stumbling around outside trying to get an Uber, but there's no cell phone service. Right, yeah. And they stop him and the other bartender. They're like, hey, you guys all right? And I was like, I'm like, we're good. Does it look like we're right? Yeah, I was like, we're good. No. And I was like, we'll just walk. But I was like, it's going to be a long walk home in this condition. Right. And they're like, do you guys want to ride? And I was like, yes. Dude, you the bartenders get Yeah, that's a big How many bartenders have driven you home? Quite a few. Zero bartenders have ever driven Quite you home. Quite a few have driven me. That's <laughs> when you know you're a good tipper and a, a good guy. When, good. They all, when they offer to bring you home. Good tipper and a bad drinker. <laughs> Yeah, so they brought us home. And it was the first time I think he'd seen us together. Yeah. And he put it together. It was pretty funny. And I was like, oh, well, I guess I got to <laughs> give him a fat tip tonight. So I was like, thanks for that ride home, man. Because it's all making sense now. But, but yeah, but the funniest part was, dude, I woke up in the morning and had a missed Uber because I actually had an Uber, but the phone oh, didn't update dang. to tell me I had one. So he's yeah. like, dude, I'm here. Where are you? Yeah. I'm like, I'm at home sleeping. Right, yeah. But yeah, there's a weird area like in West Asheville where like you're lucky if you get like one bar. Yeah. Yeah. And I wasn't thinking ahead to do yeah. it when I was on Wi-Fi at yep. the bar. Oh, you oh, you walked out. Yeah, we were outside. It would it wouldn't work though. Dude, I wasn't like thinking clearly yeah, to like be like I'll go back in sure. and use the Wi-Fi, but the bar was closed at that point too. So, but I just thought it was pretty funny because he called he totally called me out, but he was like nice about it. I was like, dude, thank you so much. He's like, ah, oh, it's all good. Yeah. All right. There's only one drinking season in the Czech Republic. How is that? Because it's cold all the time? I've been to the Czech Republic, man. I've been to Prague. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah. Amazing. I had a blast there. Yeah, and it's been there. CH has been there. CH is gone. But... Early 2000s. Yeah, buddy. So St. Patrick's Day when everyone is a little bit Irish, except for the Scots, we're always Scottish. I would like to get to Scotland. I've never been. Yeah, but I mean, it's like right there. I know. Never been. No, I, it, I've talked about it a lot. Yeah. Just mm. never, maybe next time. Yeah. Because once you're there, it's right up there. Yeah. Who drinks the most per capita beer in the world? I'm, I'm gonna say that's, I thought I saw this recently. I thought it was the U.S. I'm not just saying that because I think I thought per I read capita? that. Yeah. I doubt that. U.S. Oh, maybe like per capita. That's a weird. That'd be that like per weird, person. Yeah, per in the, person. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that might, not, might, might not be right. The checks. I could see that. Okay. Out, out. Checks out. Checks out, man. Checks out. <sighs> it's good to see people are still drinking. I wish the yeah, beer. <laughs> beer. Yeah. I wish I could like. Give everybody like the ten minute, five minute, even verbal rundown of what happened in Czech Republic. I can't. <laughs> that's such a good story, dude. That's where I got like randomly kicked off a train because I didn't have a, a train pass. Oh uh, yes, yeah, same here. In not the, me. But... Like four in the morning, they're like, "You need to get out in the middle of this yeah. field," and I yeah. literally walked two train cars back and got back on. <laughs> Cause I was like, I'm gonna die out here. It's freezing. Yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah, in the, like I'm, or I was like in the middle of like a field. Slovakia. Yeah, yeah. I don't even mm -hmm. know. Yeah. And then uh, I had like ten dollars American, yeah. and I was like, that's all I got, dude. He was just like, all right. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Same thing happened here, but that's the one part I could talk about. Yeah, yeah. I was all about not buying train tickets when I was twenty. You know they're gonna come around asking for you. They're gonna be like, hey, <laughs> we did 2000. I started homebrewing with your videos. I must say, that's why I liked it from the beginning. Funny, Funny and messy. messy. But yeah, well, too bad we uh, clean up that mess before we switch the camera angle. Ooh, 9% Trappist. Very nice. Oh, Nick's going to Munich and Prague. That'll be great. 
Oh yeah. So does New Zealand have like I know they have a bunch of hops. Yeah, like there's hops. a bunch of New Zealand hops, but is yeah. there like like a New Zealand beer or brewery? Like scene? Yeah. I don't I'm sure. Like a beer like that was like you gotta try this beer at this brewery oh, in New Zealand. Yeah, sure. I Versus like you go to like Prague or Czech or anywhere like any of you know, Ireland or wherever, like yeah. you gotta have a Guinness yeah, here, you gotta Guinness, have a yeah. Czech whatever. Bowls. Yeah, at this yeah, bar. Sure, German German lager. Yeah. I guess it'd just be a New Zealand IPA, but really everybody's brewing New Zealand IPAs outside of New Zealand. Right. They're just using New Zealand hops. So I don't right. know. Is anyone from New Zealand? What's the uh What's the move in New Zealand? Yeah, if you're in New I'm Zealand? just curious. Queenstown was a great place for beer. Oh. Yeah, Queenstown looks pretty rad. It looks incredible. Well, Zach wanna... is never patient like I should be. I feel like Zach right now you want to pull is this? not on the live version of this. He's like watching 20 minutes ago. You should ask Jesse from Still It. Just, yeah. We we're just talking with Jesse yesterday. In fact, I think I wrote a message from him. Jesse's the man. Pull it? Yeah. I just want to get the lid on. I want to get a crappy bucket. Um, did we throw them all out? No, we have a crappy. Yeah, grab. There's one out there that I could use. My crappy this bucket. One out here. One I've scratched up with uh, brew baskets in the past. Ah, oh, I see, sorry. Mr. Hargraves. Here you go, sir. All right, that works. Dirty so, bucket. So, um, here, can you put this, just set that over there? Yeah. All right, so the bucket removal process is as such. Be a man, don't use a pulley. Well, at this point, it's easy. Yeah. You could just walk this out, but there's still some like liquid dripping off the bottom and sort of. Trans you made that so graceful. Yeah. And the other thing is, if you if you really want to get all the wort, yeah, you can you squeeze could, it. If you have a clean bucket, you can tilt it like that, or squeeze it with a plate. Right. Yeah. Here, I'll sh I'll show everybody the mess. So. What's our sheet say for volume level here's my, over there? Here's my sweet, <laughs> here's my sweet uh, bucket. Ooh. You're hot. You're hot. Uh, there we go. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, there we go. Nice. All right. What's the question? Uh, let's just guys, make sure our liquid, we hit our liquid specs. Did this have volume. anything in it? Uh, like in the bottom of this basket? What's that? Did this basket have anything in it? The basket? <laughs> oh, sorry, the bucket. Had some leaves. Leaves, okay, never mind. Yeah. I was gonna say, we could we could put this um, nah. liquid into the old... We're shooting for six gallons. All right. So we're, we're in Where are we at? a little over six. So oh, nice. We're perfect. Sweet. Okay, cool, well, yeah. I'm gonna run we're this out. We're at like 6.2, so. To the grist pile. Do you want me to get the door? Nah, I'll just I'll, uh, let me, I'll kick it open here for you, just so the screen's open. Okay. Yo. Do you spell it? Cerveja Facil from Brazil. He's a great guy and has around 110,000 people. You're gonna have to elaborate on that. All right, ready? I'm ready. I mean, I would, I'm down. I don't, yeah, just let us know what, what, uh. Give us his digits. Yeah, let us know. So do you guys replace the water loss? When do you guys, we don't replace the water loss. Um, we do full volume water brewing the bag brewing. So at the beginning of the brew, brew day, all of the water for the entire brew day is in the kettle. So when we remove the basket, then we're at the level, the perfect level for uh, the boil. So the water loss is accounted for at the beginning of the brew day. So you're starting with more water um, than you would on a three tier system. So full volume mash 
um, is the answer for that. So a little bit different way to do it. Just makes it simple. Add all the water, add all the grains, mash, remove the basket and you're good. Oh, pumpkin ale. Man, we brewed a pumpkin ale a few years ago that came out really good. Um, we ended up doing like a sour pumpkin ale. There's an old video on the website. Um, Kyle may remember more, but we definitely did a, a quick sour with pumpkins. The, the pumpkin sour ale? Yeah. That was right. great, right? Yeah, it was delicious. That was, we did a quick sour for that, right? Yeah. Yeah, def go to our channel and check for the, um, if you're into pumpkin beers or whatever, and I'm not a huge pumpkin beer guy, Yeah. but that was great. Phenomenal. I'm gonna show everybody the basket. I just emptied it out. Two things happened off camera. Number one, I tried to step on that massive, massive pile of Gross. apples. We did 50 gallons of cider last week and the pile just looks like it's solid. It smells so Dude, bad. It's, it smells horrible and it's like mashed potatoes. I, I just stepped in it. It smells like, like vinegar. It smells like straight up vinegar. And suck my feet into it. Gross. Um, anyway, this is, I just uh, dumped the basket out. So you, you can pretty easily get most of the grains out, but what, 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 I, what, I, uh, what I wanted to mention was that um, if you rinse this like real quick with the hose or even just in your sink, you can get like almost all of the grist out and you get it back to looking pretty brand new as long as you don't let it dry on there. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. And then I'm gonna pop the a trick with the, the 120 volt system is um, to pop your hop basket into the kettle. Make sure I have the right size because the 20 gallon is quite a bit larger. But pop this into the kettle and that's going to be your spacer when you put your lid on while you're bringing it up to a boil and that'll just help bring it up to a boil quicker. And also when you're boiling, typically you're gonna have to keep the lid on at least halfway um, for a full five gallon batch. Just a limitation of North American 120 power. So uh, just quick tip if uh, you just wanna bring your, bring your kettle up to a boil quicker and keep a vigorous boil. Ooh, that rice lager was good. So Dutch, Dutch uh, has been following us for a while. The rice lager he's still making to this day. But I think that's one you brew with Tommy, right? Wait, who's this? Dutch, the rice lager? Yeah. That's one you brew with Tommy? Yeah. Yeah, he's uh, still brewing it to this day. Well, the first one I did with Tommy was in the black rice. Yeah, I didn't go out myself. Yeah, Kyle did, um, he got into a rice kick. They were all really good. Yeah, but check out that pumpkin, that sour pumpkin recipe. It's something I'd like to revisit. It's really good. Um, so Kyle's just doing a quick rinse of the basket. It is a little bit easier if you rinse the basket when it's still a little bit wet. Um, you can also just let it sit and then use the wastewater from the, the chilling process. Um, but just give it a quick rinse and it makes life a little bit easier. Does using a malt pipe instead of using a basket have any benefit? Um, I think it's just, just a different way of going around the same, just doing the same thing a different way. Um, it seems a little bit more complex than just using a basket. I've, I have not used a malt pipe. I've seen you know videos and pictures. Um, efficiency, I always, I've never chased efficiency, it's not, something I really care about. I, I worry more about consistency. So we'll hit 70% brew house efficiency on beers up to 1060, 1065. And then for this beer, which is quite a bit higher than that, I'll just drop my efficiency down, um, you know, 65, 66%. But 90% of the beers you're brewing in the five, 6% range, you're gonna get 70% efficiency. 
you know, it, you could shoot chase that 80, but for me, it's just easier to throw a little bit more grain in and consistently hit 70. Um, I'm not sure if there's an efficiency difference between the malt pipe and the basket, but no matter what system you're using, just dial your process in so you're getting consistent efficiency so you can dial your recipes in. Otherwise, you could have a beer where you're 80% and the next beer could be 60%. And that was that was always an issue when I brewed like three tier and I would do, you know, manual sparge between, you know, my hot liquor tank and, you know, had my tin foil or whatever over my, my um, cooler. So, you know, I, I would, my efficiency always varied. Whereas with this, I know I'm going to get 70% on 90% of my beers. If I bring a big beer, I just drop my efficiency when I create the recipe. So. All right, I'm going to flip back over to the camera real quick. And um, yeah, if you're just joining, Kyle just cleaned the basket. Yeah, so you can rewind a little bit to see what the basket looks like. But I just, I got that on the sink, so what we'll do after the, yeah, and that's like, that's pretty good. It's pretty easy to get that much out. Yeah. Um, hose is even better, but you can definitely, I just did this, did this in the sink and didn't make too much of a mess. No, and, um, very proud. Yeah, at the end of the brew day, we'll toss some PBW into the kettle and just kind of, we'll rinse it all out first and then toss this back in there with some PBW. Yeah, we like yeah. to re we like to recirculate the kettle, the pump, chiller, everything with the PBW at the end of the brew day. Oh, sweet. William just ordered the 90 degree quick disconnect. Yeah, buddy. Uh, yeah it, it, it's nice. It's one of those things, you know, when you finally make something it's like we should have done that years ago but it, it, it is nice um so thanks for that yeah i think you'll enjoy it um and if you're just joining we're brewing an imperial oatmeal stout um bunch of nice chocolatey dark malts roasted malts yeah we should actually ask people if they've had the the dark star so we had we we said that we wanted to brew a dark beer and um, oatmeal stock came to mind, and then we're like, wow, let's just, let's just like go for it. So, oh, I hit the mic on. Um, and then we we did some uh, looking around, and it's Fremont, I think, brewing, has uh, the Dark Star, which is an oatmeal imperial oatmeal stout, which I've never had it, but apparently, it is. Um, like very highly rated. Malcolm is my mic good now. So yeah, we're we and they published the recipe online. So um, or I could be wrong about that. They, they they do or they have or maybe somebody just figured out what a clone would be. But yeah, that's kind of what we modeled this recipe after. We did a little bit of um, reconfiguring as far as the hops go, but oatmeal stout is a beer and like all style guidelines. Imperial Stout is a beer in all style guidelines, but Imperial Oatmeal Stout is not. So we're excited to see how this works out. Um, oatmeal, oat, oat beers, or oatmeal stouts should have like all the roasty toasty, but be a little less bitter than your standard stouts. Um, because of the oats, you're substituting oat for some of the grains, and so the mouthfeel should be a little bit more, you Dude, know. super silky. I mean, the internet promised me it was going to be luscious and velvety smooth. So it'll be nice. Let's hope. If it's not, we'll just put it on nitro. <laughs> uh, it'll be it, it'll be good. I'm trying to get my boys from Seattle to send us some uh, six packs. Um, I, haven't, I haven't had it in a while. Of the Dark so. Star? Mm -hmm. Oh, you've had it before? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Paul lives. I've never had it. Paul lives like right around the corner from him. Got it. So. Um, <laughs> all right, Nick. Have a good good day. Thanks for popping in. No, I want you to put the mic clip in your beard. In the beard? Yeah. That might be a little, a little awkward. More beard in the monitors. Can you not hear me? I'm, I'm, I don't know what that you means. You have your mic on? I do. I can't close my lid all the more. way, do the way the handle comes out the side. Oh, this is a prototype basket that yeah. we're not using. But shoot me an email. If your handle's screwed up, you we'll send you a handle. handle. Yeah. yeah, shoot me an email, info at Clawhammer Supply, and just say, yo, you guys are idiots. My handle's messed up. And uh, right. you'll have a new handle before you know it. 
Yeah, if you missed it, we had uh, we're using a prototype basket, which we thought might may or may not give us second degree burns in, in this brew day immediately, but it didn't. So. Yeah, we're, we're working on a new handle design just for the reason he said that his handle isn't um, going down all the right. way. If we don't bend them 100% yeah. correct, it yeah. doesn't close. We test them all, but sometimes one slips through, but we have, we'll, we'll send you a bent correctly one that'll take care of it, so. Crystal malt clear. Yeah. What Dude. ingredients differ between porter and stouts? No uh, idea. I mean, they're pretty similar. Like a stout, like stouts or porters, porters or stouts. I don't know. Yeah, there's. Yeah, do, do some reading on that and then get get back to us because the um, I don't know. It just depends on what you want to call a beer in, in some cases. Gravity on this, um, Emmett. What's the what was our uh, pre-boil gravity on this? 1072. 1072. So this is gonna be a nine percent beer by the time it's all said and done, or probably eight? yeah, probably high eights. Eight or nine percent. I'm expecting it to ferment down to like 1014. Okay. I'd like to be a little little chewy. Yeah. So we put nine almost 19 pounds of grains in our basket. Um, we with we held back some water, mm -hmm. but then we put yeah. it back in. Yeah. Uh, because we had the ram. So if you're worried that you're not gonna have enough room in your uh, basket or your kettle. Just take a gallon out or whatever, two gallons, even probably a gallon. Put gallon, your greens gallon in half. and then put as much back as you can. Then mat, do your mash and then once you pull the greens, you really what we've done in the past is we've elevated the greens above the basket with the clips and then we've poured the water dirty. we held out right through the grain bed. Just do so dirt, dirty sparge. You, yeah, you do like a little mini sparge. Kind of, So it's like a dirty, dirty start. I like to call it dirty sparge. Dirty sparge. But um, I would say 22 gallons is, or 22 pounds is probably gonna be completely maxed out. Tom's Davis, you were watching Twin Peaks? Right now? Yeah, you're watching. This instead of Twin where Peaks? Where are you? Where, where do you live? What time of day is it there? And where are you in the Twin Peaks? And, and what uh, drugs are we doing? <laughs> Man. So someone said roasted malt stout, none in porter, traditionally. Okay. Yeah, again, I don't get into the weeds on stuff. Yeah, that's the thing. You are in the weeds on that one. Though. Me? No, like oh, yeah. the, the difference between yeah. porter and stout. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting, but it's one of those things I've probably read 30 times and I can't retain stuff like that because... At the end, I'm like, okay, <laughs> I like them both. Um, but yeah, people, like, people argue about it. That's all I know. Yeah, like anything brewing related or any hobby it's related. It's hot, man. It is. Where are we at? We're at 186. So. Heck yeah, anybody? Got any big plans this weekend? Big shows? You got you're going. You got you're going to a festival this yeah, weekend. I'm going to a festival this weekend. I got I got Lauren's family's coming to town, so we'll be looking at leaves, I guess. Leaves and they're well, I guess they're changing up on the parkway. Yeah. They're just starting to change down here. They're staying up in uh, Black Mountain, so sweet. Miss most of the brew day? Yeah, you didn't miss a whole lot, just no, the 60-minute mash. No, we're, you've only missed half of it. Yeah, and uh, we're once we're up to a boil, good. we're just doing a 30, a quick 30-minute boil for this. It increases your hop usage because you need to get your IBUs there in a shorter amount of time. Um, but we kind of figured for the savings, it's worth a few extra dollars in hops. So, Oh, heck yeah. Mark and his wife are getting a dog for the first time tomorrow. That's exciting. Sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not one for uh, work, but that is exciting. I. You know what? The, I miss coming home and having a dog run up to you and jump all yeah. over you. Cats just don't do that. No. If they do, it's purely for selfish reasons. They want food. They want food. Yeah. That's the only thing cats Whereas want. Whereas dogs are just like, I want to yeah, hang out. Let's dogs play. Dogs are just happy to yeah. see you. They want to hang out. That's the one thing I miss yeah. about dogs. But a puppy. Dogs. But uh, well, we get a dog. Maybe they're getting a dog and not a puppy. Else so maybe the dog, it's already a dog. Oh. That could be nice. Because the puppy stage is kind of hard. 
So someone's getting a dog. Someone's going on a cruise. Kevin Some just Kevin finished. Oh, sweet. Just brewed. Sweet, man. Easiest brew to ever had. Um, nice. Five Who's gallon, going on a cruise? Five-gallon batch on a 20-gallon system. Boom. Super Smash Bros. My wife loves the channel now. Well, that's a first. Thanks for watching. Tell your wife she is the only woman who watches the channel, let alone loves the channel. <laughs> right. It would be according great to, to get, our analytics. According to YouTube stats. Yeah. Um, pumpkin picking. Oh, yeah. Dude, grew pumpkins for the first time this year. Didn't, mean, did. the, didn't mean to oh, grow yeah. them. Uh, they just came in from the compost I threw in the back. Oh, really? So I haven't got, been over to your house in a while. We got two, uh, two pumpkins out of the deal, which worked out perfect. Dude, how big are the pumpkins? Uh, big, decent. All right, so I've planted pumpkins in my yard so many times, and I've gotten like one. We got I've two gotten like very two nice ones. Maybe three seasons. And then we got a bunch of squash, spaghetti squash, and just because it was from the compost. Like, I didn't plant anything. I don't know what happens to all my stuff. It just like. You, it seems you, like it's going well, and then it starts going bad. It, this was literally like the compost pile behind my garage. And I came back from mm. vacation. I was just like, no, I'm, I'm a good gardener. Just don't do anything. <laughs> just don't do anything. Throw your, um, throw your vegetables out behind your, Ooh, your garage. Nice bushel of steamed crabs for the year. Man, do you know what I'm into is, and I don't know if it's like an Eastern North Carolina thing, is um, steamed oysters. I never had them prepared that way until Lauren's went up to Lauren's parents, and they yeah, them, and they're so good. I've had them. I've had steamed mussels, and I didn't like them. I've had oysters, Rockefeller. You, you can't not like that. Well, that's great. I've amazing. never had them steamed up until yeah. I met them, dude. Yeah, it was great. Uh, dude, Jesse Lance, you got a shout out at the end of the um, cider video, by the way. Check that out. And check out Humber for Life's channel if you're not. Uh, he does live streams. Dude, CH is back. He can't get away, man. He can't. <laughs> um, but yeah, he does live streams every, I don't know, Mondays? Yeah, he, he's, he's in a transition period, but let us know when you're doing them. Home, Homebrew <clears throat> for Life isn't the live stream. That's no, the it's show. happy hour, Dude, yeah. If you're not subscribed to Homebrew for Life, yeah, yeah. you need to subscribe you to You have that. to, yeah. He, there are a lot of channels you need to subscribe yeah, to. Homebrew, his, Homebrew they, for Life is like the top of the list. It makes me laugh every time. Yeah, every single time. I can't keep them together. Sorry, yeah. CH. But his, oh, somebody's, his somebody's mic died. Oh, Maybe Emmett's? Okay, is, is yours on? It's gone weird. It's, weird. it's gone rogue. No, it died. Yours died? Yeah. All right. Well, that's problematic. Maybe let him know. You're swapping it. Yeah. Here, let me give you uh, mine. And uh, I'm going to give Emmett my mic. And then uh, I'm going to fix his mic. Man, it's gonna be just you for a while. Oh god. All right. We did a mic swap. We're at 192. Uh, but yeah, Homebrew for Life. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. CH makes me laugh. There's a ton of really good homebrew channels. But CH donated five dollars, <laughs> which I don't know why he keeps doing that. Please stop. But just check out his channel. Uh, heading over to Nine States Brewers Saturday, Inverness, Florida, annual beer fest. Very nice. Heck yeah, I'm gonna pour a beer. Which are we in, in four? Uh, yeah, four is the uh, four is Mythical Hammer. They're going down smooth today. So this is a cold IPA that we brewed in the live stream with White Labs, with Devin from White Labs. And this is using the Mythical Hammer yeast, which uh, is a collaboration between White Labs and us, mainly them making it and us giving them, we told, them what we, wanted. we told them what we wanted and worked with them to, to to come up with what we were looking for out of the yeast and it's a phenomenal beer 
And we'll, we'll create a blog article with the recipe, but you could get the recipe in the, uh, the live stream, but it's pretty simple. Pressure fermented this really warm with the uh, Mythical Hammer yeast, and it's delicious. There's a link for a pre-order of the yeast from White Labs. Definitely recommend picking up some of the yeast. It is pretty much the best beer we've brewed this year for sure. And uh, greetings from Croatia, right on. Wish to be able to get your gear in Europe. Yeah, we hope to someday make that happen. Uh, we're just we're just two dudes that are trying to figure things out. But yeah, that we would love to get into uh, into Europe. Um, something we hope to to look at at some point. Which would you say is your favorite brew beer thus far? Ooh. Yeah, we brewed or did they say brewery? No, that we've brewed so far. He said, I brewed a Japanese rice lager. That Japanese rice lager is really good. I was going to say, that was what I was going to say. Do you know what mine might be? That beet beer. Yeah, that was pretty unique. It was... Cool beer. And that was said to us by someone who has who bought a system. The recipe and was. Hey, we made this weird beer. You should check it out. And that beet beer to me, yeah, I think it's just because it was so unique. And like had everything I liked. I kind of really like earthy notes. Yeah, it had a lot of earthy. I love beets. So that that might be it. Um, the triple came out really good. Um, the black IPA is one of mine. That's that, the marshmallow stout. We've had quite a few, but I'd say that beet marshmallow one. Marshmallow stout was really good. Yeah, marshmallows. I'm gonna go the beet beer just because it was so different than anything I've ever seen commercially. Um, but that Japanese lager, there's a lot of good ones. You forget mm -hmm. over the years. The, the beer that I thought was going to be the worst that actually turned out man, to be really, really good. Which is that? The uh, cereal, cereal milk mm. stout with the Lucky Charms in it. That was really good. Yeah, it was kind of like a meme, a meme beer. Yeah. That was really was good. good oh, dude, he he brewed the Mexican dark lager and the black rice lager. Damn, that black rice lager. We need to brew that again. Oh, yeah, the Mexican dark was mm. really good as well. That was really good. I love that there is a retro gaming um, conversations going on in here. Um, man, I cannot think of a game we, we played all the time in college on NES. Um, Life Force? Anybody play Life Force? Really good. Dude. If you came down to Reed Hall first floor, we were playing it all the time. Dude, Life Force is so good. Heck yeah, man. Asheville's, I think there's nine more breweries coming into town. So <laughs> plenty of breweries coming in. There's a new one opening not too far from my house, which I'm really excited about. Um, super stoked. Kyle, you just beat Earthbound? Yeah. Nice. Heck yeah. Yeah, I wasn't, my parents wouldn't let me have a Nintendo growing up. So I had an Atari 2600 and I had that hooked up until I got a Genesis. Um, finally, I think when they dropped to like, you know, 69 or $79, I finally got one for Christmas years later. Um, but I love that thing. But yeah, I had my Atari 2600 hooked up way into, <laughs> way past uh, the time. I think the 64 might have been out by the time I unhooked it. Oh, where are we at temperature wise? We're getting very close to the start of the boil. I'm gonna grab the hops. Um, oh, grab the brew sheet. Um, two ounces of Magnum is what we're going with today. Oh. All right, Magnum. And for anybody just tuning in, 
uh, Imperial Oatmeal Stout. And we're doing a, a just a 30 minute boil on this guy. If you wanted to uh, goose the ABV a little bit more, you could always do a 60 and just follow the hop schedule uh, at the 30 mark. Um, but we designed this for a 30 minute boil just to shave a little bit of time off. Kind of been a big fan of the 30 minute boil, 30 minute mash lately. We went with the 60 minute mash though because decent sized grain bill and uh, wanted to pull out a little bit more efficiency. But you could probably cheat it and do a 30 and be in the ballpark without worrying. Heck yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. You're the man. Um, heck yeah. Kyle, what, uh, what's happening? Oh, well, Kyle's working on the microphone, um, which is, which is good. Getting that ready. So we are nearing the start of the boil. Like I said, we're going to do a 30 minute boil. So we got 30 minute edition, 15 minute edition. And I always think this is the part where I'm like, the brew day is going to be quick, but then I always forget, like, you got to get your fermentation equipment ready and all that stuff. And I always do that during the boil. I'll clean and sanitize all of the fermentation stuff. It kind of gives me something to do during the boil. Have you had any of your beers on commercial scale? We did, like, it wasn't one of our beers. Is this one off? No. Oh, it wasn't one of our beers. We did a kind of a video collab with uh, the guys at Dissolver. Um, and we brewed the same beer at the same time. And um, it's kind of a... Isn't, isn't the best, but it's definitely their beer, but we kind of did it side by side with them, brewed it on our system. They brewed it on their system. Um, and, uh, but nothing commercially kind of, you know, the, the yeast is the yeast is probably the most commercial thing we've done. Uh, white labs is putting out a yeast that we worked with them on called mythical hammer. There's a link somewhere to pre-order that and I highly recommend it. Why am I holding this mic? Uh, it's, it's your new mic, man. So take this one off. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let me put that thing on there. Though. Oh, gotcha. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Sorry. That's it's all. A little, little mic swap. Audio kick for a bit. Oh, top swap. There you go, bud. Hold on. Let me uh, adjust here. Plugging in mic. So, yeah, let me know if this uh, is working. <laughs> it wasn't working before we started. I was just hoping these mics would last longer than they did. And they didn't. So, can you hear me? Can you hear it? Oh. Oh, dude. That didn't work at all. Oh my god, cancel the live stream here. Uh, it's falling apart. Sorry, I interrupted you. You were talking about um, Dissolver. Yeah, just, he, he had asked if we'd done a commercial beer. I just said that's the closest we've come, but it wasn't our beer, per se, you know. I think we didn't design it 100% or anything. Well, I don't know if I have the story wrong, but um, Mike was saying that either, I don't know if they started doing their um, single hop beers. Is, is here, is it, Mike? Can, can, can anybody hear me? All right, so. David. What? Thoughts on sous vide turkey and the claw hammer system. Now let's switch to that topic. Lightning round. I wanted to do that last year because April asked me to do it, and then she. Um, we were talking about that yesterday. She, she axed it. She said too dangerous, too gross. Um. Uh, well, the guy from CV to everything. Yeah. Did one. Okay. And it didn't go well. Because it just fell apart. Cause he, yeah, because it fell apart. But if you, if you cut it in three different pieces and put it all in. Yeah, if you like, do the legs the. Way to do the it, yeah. You have to cut it in a certain See, like, I, I've been avoiding the large Thanksgiving family events. So we've just been getting a, a small chicken. <laughs> Makes things manageable. But, man, yeah, you can definitely sous vide in these things. I don't know if you want to do a whole turkey, but CH, you should film it and let us know how that works out. 
Oh gosh, we're up to a boil. This is the problem, I get distracted. Um, how do I do this with the hose attached without getting the lid to fall? Right hand or left hand? Well, let's see here. We got our boil going. Left hand. And um, what I say, magnum two ounces. So I'm gonna put these right into the hot basket. Oh, snipe. The tear did not work right, guys. Didn't work right. Kyle, can I get some scissors? Yeah, please? I have a knife for you. That'll work. We lost our scissors. It's a scissor shortage. This is, this, we're, in the, we're in the midst of the great scissor crisis of 2023. I mean, they, <laughs> they literally just, just disappeared. I know they're here, and as soon as we get another pair, they're going to show back up. And maybe that's a good thing, because then we'll have two uh, pairs of scissors. Can you set a 15 minute timer? Yeah. Hey Siri, set a 15 minute timer. Did that just set a timer she's, for everybody in chat? She's doing it, we're doing it. All right. Hey Siri. Oh crap. Set a 15 minute timer. Siri does not like me. Uh, hey, microwave, set a 15 minute timer. All right. All right, do it the old fashioned way. 15 minutes. And like I said, we're doing a 15 minute boil, or a 30 minute boil. In 15 minutes, we'll add our second edition and we'll be adding some fuggles. Those are the only two editions a 30 minute edition, a 15 minute edition. We'll chill. We'll so, you, so you add transfer. A no, oh, Siri had set a timer after all, how about that? So you added, what'd you add? Two Sorry, ounces, man, two ounces of Magnum. Sweet, cool. Which are this, the 30 minute edition. So uh, Michael Irvin's asking why we keep the lid on while boiling. It's cracked and that's because we're using a 120 volt system. Basically the max amount of juice you can get out of, of 20 volt. 15. 15 amp, 120 volt, sorry. Yeah. 120 volt um, 15 amp circuit is 1650 watts. Yeah, leaving overhead for yeah. margins of like safety. That's it. So, and so the only way you're going to be able to get more power is if you do like a dual element or you have a, like a single element maybe that plugs into two different circuits, which is going to be weird, or you can plug two different elements into two different circuits, which is going to be a little weird because then you have to find two plugs that are on different circuits, or you're going to need a 240 volt system which uses a dryer plug what do we have around here somewhere right there right here i'm not going to get it out but it's just um, the limitation of north american 120 volt power exactly so um this is like the max amount of power we can get out of this thing and we've tested this and i mean with so many beers and we actually brewed a, a dms you know risk risky what would you say that a beer that has like a proclivity for potentially um developing a dms character and um leaving the lid on but cracked gives you a better like rolling boil so you're gonna ice i summarize the hops a little bit better and you will not you'll still you know you're not going to risk like any dms and that's why people will say the boil with the lid off to begin with all right. Proclivity. Good word. Stuck on that one? Yeah. I couldn't get past proclivity. No, but yeah, that's exactly it. It's limitations. Your, your brain just buffered. <laughs> to the uh, limitation of power, man. Yeah. So if, yeah, if you're outside the U.S., you're, you're just not, probably not familiar because you're probably on 230 on 10 amps that you can get like close to what, 3,000 watts. So. Yeah. Probably. But yeah. Yeah, we did that. It was, I think the, the, the brew day is called like DMS beer or something like that. I or, think it's 120 volt experiment is okay. what it's called or like dms beer experiment yeah so we're basically like trying to force every method to get dms and right um i think on these small batches it's just not something you're gonna we do science sometimes yeah sort of in our own special way yeah and i, I feel like brulosophy's done some experiments on it too but uh lid is to keep the heat in for the boil but you, you get a really nice boil that way yeah and if you don't have the hose on like we do you can slide it back you a little can't bit more see that well on the camera but yeah it's 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 going pretty well. 
Um, but yeah, the um, like Kyle was saying, the other option would be have two elements, different circuits, but you have extension cords running and people tripping outlets yeah. for running the microwave. It's a safety hazard. It's just not ideal unless you're brewing, building a specific brewing space where you mm -hmm. know you have two circuits next to each other that you can plug yeah. both in. We're big on not using extension cords. Yeah, hundred percent. So you know, we've tried to make our cords on our stuff long enough that people are going to be able to plug it in on a table that's not even right next to an element. You know, so have enough room to like put it on the floor. And um, we've taped our cord to the wall, sorry, the floor here. But that's not like the trip hazard is one thing. But the, the other thing is if you have two elements, you know, two cords coming together at a juncture you know we're just we don't want like water to get spilled and that to be yeah know, that's like a shock hazard at that point so um yeah so that's a five minute rant on why the lids up yeah <laughs> that's a great question yeah but especially if you're outside the u.s um yeah it, it it our powers on 120 is pretty weak and it's all we have unless you wire in a 230 240 volt circuit which yeah. is expensive so yeah, if you want to boil with the lid off, just move to Leadville, Colorado at about 10,000 that, feet. And that's probably true. Boil, we'll probably only boil with the lid off. I put my 240 volt through a spot panel for GFCI Safety. Canadian Brewing Channel wins the yeah. safety award. Perfect. Yeah, that or a GFCI breaker in the panel. Yep. Both are a good, definitely needed. Like, you can't bypass that. Yeah. It's not worth saving a couple hundred bucks to kill yourself. Yeah, we have our we have the same. Yeah. GFCI um, spot panel for both of our 240s, right? Right. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> he used to be his plugs his system into the neighbor's uh, outlet. Oh, the first video I saw was Good with you idea. and Tommy. Good idea. You guys were either baked or buzzed, but it was hilarious. I can't find it's that video, dude. Did you take it down? That video is probably still up for sure. Which one? One with you and Tommy. Well, which one with me? Us? What were we doing? What were we brewing? Yeah, Overland. Give us some more content. We haven't, we haven't yeah. taken any videos down that I'm aware of. Yeah. Overland. Uh, that's just how Tommy looked at all times. Well, that's not just how I looked. <laughs> I mean, that's how, he, that's how I always saw him. This is normal resting face. Yeah. What were you brewing? It's probably one of the. The first one I think we ever brewed was maybe like an orange. Citrus. So like citra with. Um, oh man, candied orange. Yeah, so we did a candied orange, like citra or citrus beer, and we. Yeah, we we. You we candied I orange like, peels uh, in a fruit dryer. Tommy worked at three different Michelin star restaurants. And if you're not familiar with them, oh yeah, and it was probably the THC brew. But if you're not, um, if you're not familiar with Michelin star restaurants, it's like the highest accolade that can be given essentially to a restaurant. And Tommy's work in very few restaurants, you know, of the great number of restaurants there are in the world, receive a Michelin star, let alone, you know, like one, let alone three. One is the le least amount and you can get as three is the highest. Um, Tommy's worked at three different different Michelin star rated restaurants, and one of them was a three star restaurant. So, if you ever watch the um, the TV series The Bear with uh, Maddie Matheson, yeah, among other people, it's really good. It's kind of anxiety provoking for me, but um, anyway, that'll kind of give you a light into like that kind of world. And you know, I feel like you would probably need some sort of a calming vice after it's, going it's home pretty, from work it's pretty leaving an environment like that it's pretty common in the, yeah. in the industry folks to want to relax um the hoses on the wall literally we just have nails screwed in or screws screwed in to the wall screws on that one. we nailed the screws in <laughs> yeah be a man nail in your screws um they're just screws uh kind of close together and the uh metals a little bit wider than the hose, so very simple, very cheap. If you have some screws around, yeah, you can make we do it happen. Have, uh, you, you can buy these little instrument hangers as well, and probably maybe one for a ukulele or a fiddle would work for our hoses. They're quite a bit more expensive than deck screws, though. 
What's the bear on, streaming wise? Um, it's on Hulu, which okay. is infuriating because we have the commercial version. I don't know uh, if there's a version without commercials. There is, it's more expensive. I don't really, yeah, I'm I don't not pay. trying to pay for that because I don't really no. watch a whole lot of Hulu and. I just don't pay for it. I just yeah. hate that. Yeah, I feel like up. everyone canceled cable for streaming and now streaming you have to have 30 different things to make it work. All right, so Daniel said the. Um, yeah. The honeydew cantaloupe. Yeah. Goza. Remember he did, yeah, we did the cantaloupe goza. And he, we, we added like salt and lime to it. Oh, yeah. Like Tommy, he knew, yeah. he, he just. He knew flavors. He knew flavors and yeah, it was awesome to bring with him because. He had zero brewing background, but he was yeah. like, I understand how like yeah. things work together. Mm -hmm. And there was zero waste of time when we were brewing no. beer and he wouldn't even set timers. No, he so. was, he's. Or he, it, he would just look at his watch and, and it, then he would remember. He's cooking somewhere in Chicago right now. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure, I'm assuming, at a restaurant yeah, in Chicago. Chicago yeah. cooking somewhere. I wish I would have known that when I was there. He's the best. Just switched all in one system to 220, never going back to 110. Yeah, it's nice once you make the switch, but, you know, I'm not sure if, if the upgrade in terms of, like, running the power was easy. Sometimes, like, I lived in an apartment for a long time and just didn't have the option. But 220 is nice. It saves a decent amount of time. But you can still brew great beers on 120, so it's yeah. more approachable, I think. Um, but yeah, I agree. Once you once you switch, it's kind of like it's kind of like kegging and bottling. It's like I like bottling a few beers to save, but I don't miss bottling right. five gallon batches. Yeah. So. Dude, this is gonna be hard with the this being a live stream, and there is a bit of a, a delay between. Have you gotten any the B roll shots? No, that's the thing. I missed. I missed the hops. Uh, well, we'll have a, we, the we got another out. one. We'll pretend one's yeah, a third. Yeah, I didn't even see you put the hops in. I but forgot. yeah, I gotta I get. I gotta get some B roll of that because we do want to try to make this. Into oh, you got the overhead more. shot though. I do, but it's it's gonna be like a shitty it resolution. Matter. It's not recording. We'll either. just put it in like. Oh. It's not recording. We'll put it in like eight bit mode. Yeah. No. Well. I don't, yeah, I don't even know. We'll pretend. I'll do, I'll do two, I'll add right this, now. and then I'll add this, and we'll just say it at different times in the yeah. video. all right. Video magic. Yeah, we'll do that. I'm just gonna take a shot of the audience right now. I'm, I'm gonna put you guys in this video. So if you have something to say, and you wanna be in this video that I'm editing on the topic of Imperial Oatmeal Stout, let me know right now. Come on. What happened? What are you guys drinking? We are drinking the mythical Hammer Cold IPA that we did a live stream with brewing with uh, Devin from White Labs uh, a month ago. Pressure fermented it with the mythical Hammer yeast, which White Labs has on pre-order. Pressure fermented it at room temp. Delicious lager yeast. You can pre-buy it, pre-order it on White Labs, recommend it. Uh, it's really good beer. Uh, best berry brewed, brewed this year for sure. So, yeah, we were supposed to get a bunch of B-roll and try and turn this into a real brew day, but started drinking and forgot about that. Do you think about saucepans often? Do you think about saucepans? <laughs> All the time. I can't get them out of my mind. I don't think I've ever used a saucepan. When do I not think about saucepans? Do you not have a saucepan? Oh, we have plenty of saucepans. I don't think I've personally ever like made a sauce. I heard that not a full boil. It's a full boil. It just has the lid cracked. I'll show you the full boil. Kyle, can you switch? Yeah, sure. Hold on. Go for it. You got to take the lid all the way. Oh, God. well, let me. Oh, it loses it like as soon as you get the lid off. But yeah. I mean, that's a full, right. that's a full boil where I'm from. But yeah, we that's never, where lit, yeah. That's where we're talking about the DMS. And you'll hear that people say that all the time, but, um, it's, we've been brewing great beers for, I've been doing this style for 12, 13 years at this point. And, but it's just, you know, anything with brewing, you know, if it's not how it's always been done, people are going to be like, question it, which I get. It's a good thing to question things, but um, yeah, it, work, it works really well. 
Brother John, I don't know what's been happening in your life, but I feel like you've lost about two to maybe three years. To catch you up, there was a pandemic. We all stayed at home for two years. Some <laughs> the, <laughs> He's asking about the Saison, the Saison that we did like in 2019. That we cage pork. Do we have that still? Yeah, 29. No, we we did just drink that last bottle last of that. No. We we may no that's that's not it that's a Russian Imperial style. Oh, well, we no, those are gone, man. Those are gone. But the it's 2013, almost 2014. 2014. 20. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just lost a decade. Yep. It's 2023, about to be 2024. I think that beer came out really good. It was great. We tried it, it in the last live stream, and it no, was, that was a different one. Oh, it was a different. The saison is like that was an old project. Dude, I can't remember. Maybe I'm wrong. Sorry, dude. If I if I called you out, and I'm, Kyle sorry. Kyle thought it was 2013, yeah, so I he's did. doing better than you are. Exactly. We might want to change the camera back. Oh, how's my crotch looking? <laughs> Pretty good. Dude, whoever said that is hired. Yeah, who said that? It's Chris C. That's great. A pumpkin beer episode. Yeah, do people drink pumpkin beers? Like, that's one of those episodes we did where, like, maybe people will click on it and watch it. They didn't. No one did. No one cared. But it was a great beer. Okay. So, 15, my timer went off. What happens now? Okay. So, now I've got to switch back to the ankle now. You need to get your B-roll. B-roll camera. All right. I mean, people can see it from the front. The front camera's probably better, right? Um, yeah, sure. They got the that's upper. Cool. Thick. Yeah, we need your front cam. So, let's see here. I'm gonna make this super awkward. Wait, wait, hold on. Oh, we both set an alarm. Yeah. Double alarm. That way you don't forget. I'm ready for you though. Okay. Um. Cool. I'm still. Still waiting? Still, I don't know, I was actually recording. You're recording? Yeah, put your hand right there for like one second. Oh, that's so hot. Yeah. Okay. Cool. We're good. All right, man. Do your thing. Boom. So this is the second edition. That's the second edition, but for the camera, that's our first edition. <laughs> that's our 30-minute Magnum Hops edition. Yeah, we Two ounces. It. We leave the mistakes in... We tried it because that's we discovered that that's what people they want to see us fail. Um, but so this is this, I missed the first top. Edition. That was that was for the first top edition. So yeah. Now I need a, a different angle for so this. So this is the second. This is yeah. So this is <clears throat> the second fuggle, second ounce of fuggle right, for the fifteen. Put your hand there. Put your hand back again. Okay. Cool. Wow, what a shot. It's just like a plastic, all you really see is like a plastic bag. Nice. <laughs> we'll have to take B-roll from another video. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to set the timer for 15 minutes. So that was our 15-minute edition, two ounces. So a total of four ounces in this beer. Not super high IBUs because it's 30-minute boil, but it should be a nice balanced beer should be a little malt forward but as um as a stuff wait, should be did you throw a whirl flag uh, that's, that's what i was looking for what would you just put in there the one hot pellet that didn't oh, make it one hot pellet got it i was looking for one when i was rummaging through here earlier when you were filming and i gave up because i couldn't find it here it is and um, Ross is welcome back anytime. He actually came back this summer, and I was out of town. Me, we, so I brewed with him. Emmett and Ross brewed together. But we, we don't know how to film. But yeah, if we had done, if we were doing live streams, then we would have totally live streamed that. But I don't, again, I don't even know how to set up any of this either. Yeah. You have to have like a PhD Dude. in cameraography. Yeah, you have to pretty much have a computer science degree, <sighs> which I had. I had an IT degree, but this <laughs> stuff's like insane. But um, yeah, CH helped out quite a bit, and um, Brian, Brian from, from Short Circuit helped us figure out all this stuff. But yeah, he came into town for a wedding, and we brewed uh, brewed a bunch of beer. 
but uh, yeah, we, Kyle was gone, so we didn't we weren't able to film it. But he'll be back. He'll be back for sure. Uh, thoughts on hop attenuation with a hop spider versus going straight in. Um, for better conditions, like right now, like we're not looking for huge aroma bursts. I I have no, I don't think it really makes a difference on your early editions, like your 60 or 30s, assuming that it's covered in wort. Um, I do think it can play a factor in the later editions, um, just because a lot of times you're doing like six or eight ounces, a lot of times you're not getting a ton of liquid around them. So for like huge hop, especially Whirlpool editions, um, going in raw, if you have a Whirlpool arm, works really well. Or she's using a cheap hop bag if you're doing a huge Whirlpool edition, works really well too. Um, but the Whirlpool, we did uh, the last live stream we did with this beer. We did, I think, four or five, six ounces uh, in the Whirlpool straight in, worked really well. Um, okay. So, but yeah, I think it, I think on Aroma Editions for sure. Um, either go in, go in, go in raw with a uh, Whirlpool or um, a bag, a big bag, so it has a lot of movement. Um, but, you know, for stout where you're just looking for bitterness, I don't really think it matters. Just throw them in there, in the basket. Um, but yeah, for the hoppy beers, this came out great. We used the Whirlpool. It's a, a hop forward um, cold IPA um, and definitely recommend that. Oh man, it's been a pretty good brew day, which means something is probably gonna go wrong. Yep. Yep, there it is. There it is, just as I said it. If I knew how to change the camera, I would. Um, but I had the lid a little too covered. Almost had a massive boil over. And uh, if I knew how to change the camera, I would. So I'm just gonna wipe this up. Nothing happened. Cameraman, you missed it. Did you do boil it? Almost. That's the kind of stuff. That's the that's the A tier content. But you can also see we're extremely lazy in our brewing methods. Um, we left the unboiled wort in the hoses. I like to do that. It's Kyle's move. I don't even unintentionally do that. That's an intentional move. Yeah, that's his move. Never have had issues with it. No. I personally remove my hoses, but Kyle leaves them on, and it it is a good cheat. You don't have to. Take them out, clean them. I like to leave my hose in. What can I say? Yep. And then it mixes in with the boiling wort. And it's such a little volume, it doesn't, it's not going to affect your gravity readings or anything. But it is a nice cheat. You really don't have to worry about anything. And it's in a clean, sanitized hose, so mm -hmm. no big deal. And we'll recirculate it uh, while it's boiling, too. So. And have you ever forgot to close the ball valve? with the hose open. Uh, I turned the heating element on without water in it today. Um, I was trying to turn the pump off and turn the element on. So yeah, I think I've done it all. I've left ball valves open, turned the heat, the element on with no water. Just like anybody else, I do the dumbest stuff. Like we were cleaning the, we were running PBW through it and I meant to kill the pump. Yeah, I said killing the pump. I turned the heater on when we were when the water was empty, and 20 seconds later, I was like, "What's that smell?" And uh, was running the pump dry and firing an empty kettle. So, oh, nice! So yeah, you were doing both. Oh yeah, yeah, I was ruining everything. Uh, do we use firm caps? We don't. Typically, I just monitor the boil a little bit better. But um, a firm cap is that? That's for like boil overs, is that right? Firm cap S or something, I believe. That's to keep boil overs from happening, is that right? Um, are you asking me? Yeah. I'm not the guy who knows the things. Johnny K, is that what that is? Um, I mean, boiling over in this kettle is pretty impressive feat because there's yeah. five gallons of headspace. Right. Um, 
but I just had the kettle a little bit too tight, trying to trying to keep a nice boil, um, and also trying not to have this yeah. hose pull like, the lid off. Every once in a while, that will happen, and it's kind of dependent on the beer. Also, you you almost have to have the insulation jacket on to do that. To boil over? Yeah, you know, if you have it just on a metal table, for example, that this kind of acts as a heat sink. Oh yeah, for and sure. It's not going to get really as hot. So, yeah. by the way, if you're looking for a metal, oh, sorry, metal, if you're looking for a better boil. Um, two pieces of advice. You can either just get, get a piece of insulation and put that under whatever you have your table on, especially if it, if, sorry, your brew kettle on, especially if it's conductive, heat conductive, um, or you could get a insulation jacket and that helps a lot. Yeah, I just had the lid on too tight is what that comes down to. I was living on the edge. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, we don't use it just because honestly, with the 120 system, and the 240, um, it's, it's really not needed. There's so much head space. That was just me living on the edge of having it a little bit too closed. We'll give it a try. I've never, I've never had a boil over with the system. Um, Dude, we've today. never really had a bad boil over. Uh -uh. Which is, which is I also surprising. pay attention I'm usually nearby, but excuse me, <clears throat> that was gross. Um, but yeah, if you're brewing a smaller kettle and you don't have a ton of headspace, stuff like that works really well. Here you can stick a, a stick of butter in too. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Jesse said. I think the distillers do that in commercial distillers. So I just stick, stick a pet of butter me. in there. Keep it from foaming, yeah. Dude, in high school, my friend's mom used to recommend that we drank, or did we drink, that we'd eat a stick of butter before we went out drinking. Why? So it coats your stomach. When you were in high school, she told you yeah, that? Yeah. Okay. She's, she's Akron, my, Akron, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> she's, my, she's one of my favorite. Uh, would you leave the lid on with the 240 system? No. Um, there's so much power in that in that 240 system that, no, absolutely not. Crank it to 100% of power. Once it's up to a boil, drop it down to like 45 to 55%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you put the lid on that thing, you'll be boiling yeah, over yeah. for sure. Right. Uh, what size is the fittings on the lid? Uh, this is just a quick disconnect fitting. And then the inside of this is a uh, threaded half inch NPT. And it's just a 90 degree quick disconnect to, I believe, is that female? That's fem Male threaded? I'd, I'd have to look. I can't remember which thread's what off the top of my head. If you're asking because you want this 90 degree fitting or a 90 degree fitting, we've we've made one specifically for this. A 90 degree half inch NPT to quick quick disconnect. We made it's this. It's on our site. Yeah, you just go to Clawhammer. Yeah, we sell this fitting. Is that what I said? Is that what I said? Yeah, well, I was saying we made this specific one. Yeah. Yeah. I was just kind of being silly. Okay. Like you, like we made it, and I was like, "Well, we made this one." Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, but yeah, um, but yeah, it's just quick disconnect to half inch for our spray valve. So yeah, if you have one of our systems and you want to upgrade, we just uh, this just came out a couple weeks ago. The small little upgrades, but it, it's a nice, it's a nice little upgrade. Yeah, I was gonna say um, thirty percent would work even for the 240, depending on the beer. And then maybe, we often do five gallon batches as well in our, ten, in our 20 gallon, but like in this, like 30% for the, for a boil. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, like yeah. 50, 50% 50 sometimes. It just, just yeah, depends just on the like volume. Yeah, just adjust to your needs. But yeah, that's true, 55, 60 might be on 10 gallon batches. Yeah, so uh, two, uh, the it's like a 6500 watt element in the 240 55 5500 watt it literally is three times as much power three times as this you know so it's double the um voltage but three times the wattage yeah so mind your lid for boil overs is the more, more i'm gonna crush another one yeah i know it's uh it's really good man it's so good they got to meet lauren and her parents out for dinner later it should go out it should work out mm. well that's gonna go really well. Yeah, maybe um, bring a growler. Dude, this is really good. Yeah, it's got that. 
you know, like the lager element to it is yeah. nice. Yeah. It, it makes it really, it's an IPA that's like very refreshing. Even the, even despite the fact that it's not super carbonated just yet, because I still, it's not even, it wasn't, you know, it wouldn't have been, it probably had. Well, you, we had it under some pressure 12, for fermentation. What's that? It was under some pressure for fermentation. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, not yeah. a ton. Yeah, but. yeah. And so there was, yeah, yeah, sure. But. Once it's fully carved up, it's gonna be really good. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's like it's great now, but it's gonna be like, like for me, carbonation wise, perfect. Mm -hmm. oh, I, don't, yeah. I don't like heavily yeah, carbonated beers, so to me, it's it's great. I mean, it'll be you probably get a little bit more of the aromas and stuff once yeah. it's fully carbonated. Right. Um, but in terms of like drinkability, I can crush like under carb beers all day. Yeah, sure. Is the cold IPA recipe on the website? It's not. We did a live stream with White Labs with Devin from yeah. White Labs. Where is it? Is there? It's um, right there. But yeah, super simple. That was literally here. Grab that sheet and bring it over here. Seventy-six percent uh, Pilsner malt. We use Riverbend. Sixteen point six percent flaked rice, and seven point four percent carafoam. Um, and we got a ten fifty-two and fermented it out. You take a reading, probably ten ten. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then. We did Centennial for 30 minutes, and that was one ounce, I believe. You might have to check the video, because I have a line through that. So it's probably one ounce. I do I do remember we forgot to do something, or we called in the audible, or we might something. Have, yeah, we might not have had the hop. But that was a 30 minute boil as well. And then it was all Whirlpool, two, four, six ounces of Whirlpool between Citra and Sim Simcoe. Um, so just a little bit bitterness at the beginning. Yeah. The rest is this world yeah. ports. And we do, and yeah, somebody asked about this earlier and I never pulled it off the wall, but yeah, this is a whirlpool arm. So this was, I mean, people, have, I know Steve for sure, apartment Steve, maybe other people had asked about this as well. Yeah. We've been getting questions for arm. But Steve, um, apartment Steve. We call him Apartment Steve. It's Steve the Apartment Brewer. So yeah. check it out. The Apartment Brewer is another YouTube channel. Um, he started doing, he started brewing without the hot basket and kind of came up with a protocol for that. And because of that, he was getting really good results. So we went ahead and made a Whirlpool arm. So we don't have a Whirlpool port in the kettle. And we're probably not going to add one. This is pretty sweet. You can just pop it in and instead of your hose running, you know, wherever you're running it to, you just pop it onto this and do a little whirlpool and increase your hop utilization. Yeah, we need to do a quick video because if you slide it up through the handle, it locks it in place, so it yeah. gives you a good whirlpool. Right. So, and that's we we use the hop um, we use a whirlpool arm for this beer as well. Yeah, and those go no in. Basket. Yeah, one in without a filter. This beer we're using the hop basket. It's not a lot of hops. It's all bittering additions. It's all bittering additions, and we never have a problem with bittering. No. But you know, what what, what I would say is that this definitely, you can tell that it increases the aroma. Mm -hmm. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah, on late additions, for sure. So this isn't, you know. So if you have a kettle, if you bought, it doesn't matter when you bought a brew system from us. We have a whirlpool arm for the. 10 gallon and the 20 gallon system. And you can find both of those, I think in the brewing accessories. Oh shoot. Portion heat of our off. website. Heat off, got it. Oh, actually keep the heat on. Okay. Sorry, I turned it off. Uh, but we should probably recirculate through the chiller. Ah, oh, got it. This is how it goes, man. We, all should, we should always add a little bit of extra water because we're gonna boil longer than we think we are. Because we always do this. We did add a little extra water. Oh, great. Yeah, point. Point like two five. Um, okay. So chiller. Yeah. This is why I don't typically drink before this the hot the cold side. Um, another long hose. I cleaned a couple earlier. Yeah, that's probably this one. You cool? I'll, I'll put it this back. front door. Or did you close it because of noise? Yeah, uh, you can open it. It's probably fine. If it gets too noisy, let us know. We're gonna open the uh, front door. And forever. For whoever asked, I added I added Ross up there for you. All right. Yeah, we just like to uh, run that hot work through the plate chiller. 
we always, at the end of every brew day, run PBW through everything, including the plate chiller for a good 30, 60 minutes at 160, 170. Um, so we keep our plate chillers really clean, but I don't know, it just makes you feel a little bit better running some boiling wort uh, through the plate chiller. Yeah, in fact, our, brew our, our live stream today was delayed by our cleaning. cleaning. Because we forgot to turn the heat on when we had PBW in there. Uh, yes. That was me. Yes. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we're not heating up. I oh. started cleaning. <laughs> Never cleaning the usually heat takes on. like an hour. It took me about five hours today. Yeah. yeah. Billy Joe says never drink until the brew day is over. That's the smart way yeah. to do it. That's not bad advice. That's great advice. I'm actually going to hook, uh, before you turn the uh, pump on, mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hook the cooling water hoses up. Oh yeah. That'd be great. And I think the other thing I'm going to do is maybe set this up so everybody can see it. Do you guys have a new 90 degree thing that, uh, I said of the bazooka tube, Chris, we're working on that currently. Um, there's a bunch of ultra shelf ones, but I'm just not super stoked on them. I've tested a bunch. So we're actually <laughs> testing out a few designs that are a little bit more of like a 90. So they just kind of go in and come down, um, for the pickup tube. Yeah. So for the whirlpool, um, when you're using the Whirlpool arm, it's nice. You're going to have to remove the bazooka tube because that will clog immediately. So instead of the bazooka tube, we're in the process of designing a 90 pickup. Um, but until then, you can just tilt the kettle um, and, and pull that out. But hopefully we'll have that 90 te fully tested and flushed out here sooner than later. Um, that's kind of been a work in progress. We have a prototype in here and it's 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 okay but it's not it's not quite there Wait, what are you talking about the pickup tube at the bottom when oh you got the, it when you remove the bazooka tube oh we're not offering that yet uh um, everybody oh yeah because we wanted to change we're the, doing like more of a 90. yeah so yep well but yes if you are going to use a whirlpool uh one of our whirlpool arms and you're adding a ton of hops remove the bazooka tube is that in right now what's that r90 fitting in there no. No, okay, got it. I was going to uh, say. It's one it, of the other prototypes. It's mega prototype day. If yeah. I mean, we're kind of always playing around with stuff. Yeah. Um, but. Oh, get on that conference call. Good seeing you, brother John. Appreciate you popping through. <laughs> Dude, I love a good conference call. Dude, nothing beats a good conference call. I'm so glad that we rarely have conference calls. I mean. Can you imagine, like, working somewhere you get conference calls all the time? I mean, John, no offense. Maybe they're a good time. I'm yeah, not a conference I, call if guy. If I was like John, and he's probably like great at conference calls. Yeah, I bet he's amazing. He wa he's, looks at the camera and the screen and pays he, attention. He's taking notes. He's taking notes and he's contributing and he knows what's going on and he's probably like competent at his job. <laughs> you know, that'd be I'd I'd be all about it. But me being me, like none of those things are true for me. So I mean, the conference calls we have, I don't mind them, but it's not my forte. So um, I'm, this is a plate chiller here on the, uh, let's see here, you can barely see that. But on the bottom of the screen, I'm just, this is the hose that I'm gonna drain water out of. And then back here is a hose bib. You can probably see that, yeah. It's on hot water now. It's on hot, so I'll switch it. So I built this into the wall. Um, if you just have a regular hose bib outside, you can run a hose into your house and a drain hose out. CH um, from Homebrew for Life, I was over at his place in Knoxville a few weeks back and I helped him put a hose bib under his sink. That's actually really easy to do. So he didn't, I wanted him to make a dedicated video because yeah. I thought it would be a great video. Yeah, it would be because we get that question once a week. But he didn't, so I think I'm just going to have to maybe make a dedicated video now. Come on, come on. Come on, that would have given you at least 87 views. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, you could put one on your sink easily. I went ahead and just built one straight into the wall, which, you know, if you like, 
own your house or your, you know, whatever. You can put one in your, wherever you're doing basement, your brewery, probably, basement, yeah. garage, yeah. wherever. Um, Living room. But there's a way to do this. I mean, this is like a full on hose bib like you would see outside, but there's a way to do this under your sink in a very easy fashion. I mean, literally it took us, we bought like two parts and it took me- Dude, shark bike fittings? Yeah, it took me like, no, you don't even need that. Is it copper? Yeah, you just do, you just, um, you just have to buy a T. I have to buy as a T. But how do you, is it PEXO or is it copper? Um, it was a brass T. Okay, yeah. but, but how did it attach? Um, so you screw it in between the, like the water supply to your sink and wherever the water is coming from. Oh, like the flux. Yeah, so you put a T in there. Right, and mm -hmm. then you run the 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 leg off that T to a little hose bib. Right, and it's just like a one way, you know. Like but in a terms of a valve. in terms of like teeing into the water supply, though, like soldering involved. No, dude, no. no. You're literally unscrewing. Gotcha. Just, yeah, you unscrew. Gotcha. You're teeing it right one at the thing. At, put the T at the, the main the source. There, here. Up. Exactly. I hear you. It's it's so easy. We could probably do a video well, under yeah, our we'll, sink. Yeah, we'll yeah. put one under our sink. We do sink get that well. question quite, especially if people in apartments yeah. where they're like, dude, I can't like right. do anything. Yeah. We should definitely do that. Yeah. No soldering, no shark bites, just right. the T and good times. Yeah. Well, we should make that video because we do get that question, especially from like when you're lived in apartments forever. Right. It was a breeze. I mean, if, if CH was able to do it, or did you do it? I did it for Oh, but CH oversaw it. <laughs> CH was in the vicinity. CH filmed me with the hose that we ran out from under his sink to the bathroom, and then I put it in between my legs and pretended like I was peeing like oh, 10 nice. feet into it. So that was CH's contribution. He filmed that. So Johnny K says, disconnect from Home Depot, cheap way to save. A cheap way to save a little time in the brew day connecting garden hose. Yeah, hundred percent. We Johnny, we have quick disconnects for our garden hose fittings. Don't know where they went. Um, with, as with everything, do we do so many things? We have we move hoses around we, a lot. We're moving so much stuff all the time. Yeah, but it hundred percent. If you have one more really, system, I just took this off because we needed it the other day because we have a different hose. But yeah, if you have a permanent setup or you're using the same setup every time, those quick disconnects from Home Depot, Lowe's, Amazon right. for the garden hose side, dude, super super clutch. Good call, Johnny K. Do you want to just pop the whirlpool arm in there just so the hose is kind of like secured a little bit better? Yes. Let's do that. That'd make me feel better. Yeah. And then That's we'll just go ahead, go ahead and... Uh, put, uh, is it hot? It's hot. It's hot. No, it's fine. It's not hot at all. Oh, okay. Why does that... Okay, there we go. Dude. Oh, wait. Is that a 20-gallon? Shh. Yep. Shoot. That's all right. Where's the 10 gallon? I, I, I actually, it doesn't it matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. So that's the, the world polar for the 20 gallon. That doesn't matter. We're just using this for the. What's, uh, where's the 10 gallon one? I don't know, man. Honestly, I threw one away the other day. You threw oh, one out? But it wasn't. Because remember, we had a smaller prototype. Mm -hmm. It was a smaller diameter. You threw out the wrong one. I don't think I did. Mm -hmm. No, there's got to be one around mm -hmm. here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Let's look for it. This is why you shouldn't drink when you're brewing. I wasn't completely sober when I did that. I'm just saying right now. I have but, no um, idea. I have what, no though. idea where it is, dude. Let's just yeah, roll I'm with it. Yeah, I'm not seeing any anywhere. All right. I think you threw it out. Probably. Um, so we got the roll pull arm in, just to um, just the easy way to. I don't know. Oh, for the hose, so it recirculates. Is the ball valve open? Yeah, oh, actually, let's talk about this real quick. So we, depending on when you bought your brew system, it may or may not come with a clip. I'm gonna switch this camera. This is yet another innovation that um, a customer came up with. So depending on when you bought your brew system, it may or may not come with, just like a standard clip, you can just clip your hose into place and- It's for when you're you know, chilling and recirculating to clip it in. So basically it like, we're, like what we're doing right now. Um, you could use a clip. We just happened to see the whirlpool arm on the wall uh, before grabbing this, and you can. We're, we don't really need a whirlpool at this point, but you know, Kyle, Kyle just wanted to show off the whirlpool arm. Yeah, NBC to, to CH. What's up? Dude. Is that all you got, CH? Ten dollars? Come, Come on, on man. Come on. Do a thousand. A million. 
Dude, CH. CH, we were just talking about you, man. We were. We were talking about your... Um, your mom. <laughs> you Miss Hardy. Mainly. We're talking about Miss Hardy. Uh, I'm going to turn the pump on, though. Is that cool? Yeah, go for it. And right now, really, all I want to do is get a little of that boiling wort, close to boiling wort, through the plate chiller on the uh, 110 systems. Kind of as soon as that wort hits that plate chiller, you're going to lose... You're just going to still have a little boil, but it's going to kill it for the most part. So at the end of the boil, I like to recirculate for like a minute before we actually start chilling. And that's just to make sure anything in the chiller is hit with boiling wort. Should, so. should we go ahead and get a... We have the, the kegs. We already cleaned in star sand. Oh, yeah. Some They're kegs, all ready to go. We, we, still, we still probably need to restart sand it, wouldn't you say? I don't think so. You sure? I'm drunk. <laughs> You're drunk. Um, cool. Do you want, are we going to turn the cooling water on? Uh, uh, let's give it a minute. A minute? Yeah. All right. You out lost. Okay, we're good on audio. So right now, Kyle's hooking up the chilling hoses and uh, it's going to go through the plate chiller. I don't think you can, you might be able to see it in the over. Oh, no, we only have one camera live. I can, uh, I'll switch it. Yeah, switch cams. So um, we got the garden hose hooked up to the chiller and then the wastewater is just running outside. If you're in an apartment or in your house, uh, just run it down your kitchen sink. It's just probably the easiest way to get rid of it. Um, I've got like a lot of extra hose in this setup. I would have, I would have probably set it up a little differently. That's all I, good. If I was thinking ahead, but we just happen to have extra long hoses here. It's kind of weird that this beer is so dark. It kind of looks like blue in the hoses. It looks like the word's about to shoot out that hose. Let's hope not. Which hose? Are we Which talking hose? About? Yeah, what are we talking about? <laughs> Give me a heads what up. What are we talking about, guy? I don't want to clean up ten gallons of anything. Five gallons. All right, I'm gonna turn the cooling water on. Is that cool? Um, all right, I guess so. And you switch it to cold water? It is, no, I didn't, no. Okay. So the other thing we built into our, um, studio, studio here was, a, a valve, a way to switch between hot and cold water. So we can do a mix or we can do all hot, we can do, we can do all cold, but at the end of the day, it's coming out of a hose bib, so. We use hot water yeah. in our instant hot water like tank to cheat our warm up on our when we fill our kettle. Did you turn the heat off? Yeah, uh, the heat is off. Cool. Pump is on. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the. So in case you're just tuning in, we are at the end of the Imperial Oatmeal Stout Brew Day, um, and right now we're just recirculating the wort through the kettle while we go through the plate chiller to chill the wort down the yeast pitching temperature. And um, it's been a pretty good brew day so far. Knock I haven't on spilled wood. anything just yet. Almost had a boil over, but. Yeah. Um, and I'm feeling pretty good. Been drinking the Mythical Hammer Cold IPA we brewed in a live stream a little while back with White Labs. And uh, I'm pretty much useless at this point, Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Johnny K wants to see the Whirlpool. Well, we don't have it installed right, Johnny K, nor are we using the correct size Whirlpool arm in our kettle. Because Kyle threw out I don't the think 10 I, I don't think I threw out. Arm. No, I think I threw out like an old one. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Pretty sure. Mm, I don't think so. But we had plenty of them in stock, just not here. <laughs> Um, probably switch cameras back. Oh yeah, sure. But yeah, there we go. Yeah, I mean it's it's pitch black uh, work, so you really can't see anything. But we will put out a dedicated video on using the whirlpool arm and how to put it in there to lock it in. Works really well. You can check out the uh, the live stream we did with White Labs, um, the cold IPA oh, mythical dude. hammer. I knew I didn't throw it out. Oh, we got it right there? Yeah. Okay. Cool. It's getting real noisy here, but yeah, this... 
It's just a little bit shorter. Yeah, we we just end up with so much stuff here. Pro, we're always getting like prototype stuff made, and yeah. people send us stuff, and we just have like so much crap around this office. So I threw out our original whirlpool arm design, which had a you know, diameter of like half of this. It was a quarter inch or something. Mm, way but smaller. then yeah, which um yeah. So I, th I th we didn't need it, man. I threw it out. Yeah, good call. So, but this was over there by our. Much of, yeah, so, so this is like the proper size. So it fits down into. This is the 20 gallon one. Yeah, that, that's for the 20, but we're just going to leave it in now. We're just using it to serve a purpose. <laughs> and that purpose is. <laughs> serving purposes. It's serving purposes, Dan. <laughs> the purpose of serving purposes. Um, yeah. What percent is this beer? I'm feeling really good. 5.4? Uh, I don't. Mm, might be. Just the lightweight, I guess. Residuals from last night, maybe. Johnny K, we will make that video, though. Don't you worry. But yeah, anybody tuning in, Imperial Oatmeal Stout, we're chilling down. We're going to pitch it with uh, US, the blue packet, US 04, oh, right? Four. English Ale. Uh, where did you put or it? Or is that 05? Oh, no, it's over there. Here, I'll grab it. I'll grab it. I moved it. I'm so bad at remembering numbers. US 04, English Ale. The blue packet. Um, so we're gonna do two packets of that, and we're gonna we're probably gonna pressure ferment it. Um, I think. What do you think? Um, sure. Why not? Okay. Well, yeah. Did we talk about this? We. I thought we we're gonna take the pressure fermenter off. The mythical hammer and then put it on this. Yeah, but why why were we we were Because I wanted to ferment it a little bit cooler. And then we're like, well we could just ferment it a little bit warmer at room temp. Put a little bit of pressure on it. Pressure, so. Yeah. Or we could throw it in the key, but that's probably way warmer, cooler. And this is why you should have everything figured out before you start drinking. Did we take a gravity reading? Dude, did you We did not. Once it's uh, fully chilled. We will. Our pre-boil was... Ten seventy-two was a pre-boil. So, a little bit higher than that. We only did a 30-minute 30, 30 boil. Um, so we will see, we'll see what we get. Check our Dude, volume. Our chiller is making the weirdest noise. Is there air in the line? Yeah, I feel like it's in the um, cooling water line. Yeah, that's weird. I've never heard it make that noise before. No. That is weird. There we go. Now it's still doing it. I was trying to figure out what that noise was. Emmett, where, do we have any more um, star sand? Oh, yeah, we have a gallon. Gallon of it? Yeah. Do you know where it is? Under the sink, I think. Hmm, I couldn't. I can't find it. All right. How many gallons? We're making five gallons of the this Imperial Oatmeal Stout. Any bets on whether that if Boston spills over? Yeah. I turned it off. We're good. We got. I have like a gallon to go, but. We took a pre-boil gravity reading with a, dang, why is that making noise? We took a pre-boil gravity with a mash temp hydrometer. So if you've never used one of those, it's a hydrometer that's calibrated to take um, a specific gravity reading at 155 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is exactly what we mashed at. So. We were actually right on the money with our pre-boil gravity. I'm feeling pretty good on a zero to Emmett scale. I'm like a, probably seven, maybe an eight. So um, kinks in the hose. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't see any kinks in the hose. So it's just a little weird. What's going on here? It, it worked itself out. But I am missing uh, star sand. I'm going to wait for Emmett to get back from the bathroom. Hopefully he remembered to take his mic off and you guys are gonna listen to him take a leak right now. I don't see it here, so you might, you, he, he might be getting a good old treat. 
I mean, did you take your mic off? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Um, so, yeah, I can't, I, I couldn't, I didn't see the, uh, I didn't I mean, see real the star sand. Heavy stream if they had heard that. Oh, yeah. Healthy stream. So, we're, oh, here we go. You're talking like a whole. Oh, a gallon jug. Got it, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, are we holding it together? Kind of, maybe? With duct tape and string. How are you feeling, Kyle, on a zero to Emmett scale? Man, I got it. I said I'm a seven to eight. Yeah, you're holding it together way better than I am. I don't know what's going on. Oh, man. Anywho, we're here having a very official brew day. Official? Mm-hmm. Very fancy. We should talk about the fact that for people who are just dropping in, uh, literally we've brewed less this year than we have at any point in probably the last, uh, easily the last five, six, or seven oh, years. Easy. Yeah. Yeah, it's been... Unfortunately, uh, but it, it's not because we didn't want to brew, it's just because uh, we've been working on the keg project. Yeah, I don't think they can see that. But the keg project has finally come together. I don't think they can see the keg, the keg tap list, but... Literally, we have the Mythical Hammer Cold IPA that we're drinking right now that we brewed with White Lab. That's literally the only beer that we have on tap right now. And the last beer... Or we, we have Miss Hardy, Mom's Milk Stout. Well, yeah, that's always on tap, baby. And uh, before that, we brewed the and last then, uh, beer... Ball's beer. last beer we brewed was Dissolver before that. So it's been a lot of, we've been doing way too much work work and we finally yeah. finished the, the keg project. So it's kind of nice to actually get to enjoy using our equipment and hanging out and hanging out with the, the YouTube community. So it's been nice. But yeah, our plan is we're going to have a bunch of beers back on tap and then obviously there's 50 gallons of cider actively fermenting um, with different yeasts and some have fruit additions besides the apples so pretty uh, pretty excited to have taps full again yeah especially you know fall winter season it's gonna be a bit of a cider takeover at the I beginning I love when the sun goes down and you can start drinking and you don't get sunburnt <laughs> A nice triple would look good on the board. It would. I feel like I can't brew a triple without Ross, so we'll have to get Ross down for a triple. Yeah, and you got to make sure uh, Lauren's off work so she can come pick you up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, when we brewed that triple, that was at our old studio. I, I, I <laughs> had very limited experience with... Um, with that style of beer. Like, it's just not something I gravitate towards. And Ross, did Ross bring a bunch or we went to the liquor store yeah, and yeah, bought a bunch? Yeah, he brought a bunch of Yeah, he brought a bunch of beers to try. And by the end of the brew day, I was hammered. Dude. Hammered to the point where like, I was passed out outside the office. And my girlfriend had to come pick me up from work because I was drunk as shit. I, I, I remember there was a point where you were inside and I was outside or I was outside and you were in, but let's just say I was outside. And I remember... You screamed like, out the window to her. It, it wasn't was, my fault. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that yeah. was what happened. I was laying in the grass out back. I said, I, I, well, I actually left. You guys brewed the beer and I left. And oh, I that's came right. back and you were like blocked out. Oh, dude. <laughs> just got hammered. That was fun, though, because Lauren just came. She's like, it's okay. We'll get you home. We'll get you some food. <laughs> <laughs> She's the best. Oh, we had, and Ross was like perfectly fine. Yeah. I'm like, Ross, you're a Ross machine. Is like that. Ross is younger than we are, though, too. People noticed that in the triple video, so I wasn't hiding it. Yeah, I have zero poker face when I'm drunk or drinking or giddy. The problem is, I'll just keep, keep it going. Yeah. But that, yeah, that, that was a really fun video. But yeah, I think that might be the move when he when we get him back in town. I'm sure he'll be in town for something at some point. We'll uh, we'll do. Oh, we'll go out there next time we're out that way because he's got. Yeah, Ross has got a brew system. Yeah, and his, some of his homies do as well. Yeah, a bunch of his buddies out there have have them. So he's still brewing beer, hanging out. So.
That was a B, I'm pretty sure. I think I think we're good. At this time of the year, they're kind of just out. probably well, you have um, fifty out. pounds of cider juice apples yeah. in the backyard. Yeah, I mean probably a couple hundred. Let's make a claw hammered video. We're on our way. So I haven't done anything in a while. What's that? Brewing wise, feel no, pretty you, good about that. Yeah, you, mean, you haven't done any work, you mean? Yeah. Or you got it? Yeah. That's all right. Uh, it's 78 degrees, so I'd like we're, to get it yeah, down we're, to... Yeah, we're close. Well, yeah, yeah, where do you want to stop? I'd like to get it to like 68. Okay. I feel like, like I want degrees. a little bit more star sand than this in a bigger container. Oh, you know what? This has star sand in it. Uh, is that the lid I'm going to use? This is the lid I'm going to use. And the, what are we going to use for... Are we pressure fermenting? Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to put this on here and yeah. I'm going to shake it up. And then what about... I'm going to maximize this, the star sand bubbles. What about the... Uh, what are those called? Spondy valve? Yes. I mean, what if we just did a blow-off tube on it? Because we already have a... It depends on what temperature we're going to do. Right. It. Yeah, we need... We didn't... We didn't um, procure a. I thought you took it off the mythical, the mythical hammer. Oh, you're right. I did take one off. This is the plan. I believe. I, I, don't, even I don't even remember the plan. That's why I don't like making plans. I don't remember the plans. Yes. We but gotta yeah. figure we'll clean that. I'm doing nothing. It's great. I'm just yeah. looking at the comments. I want to spin off Ross Brew Channel. We all do. I want just a 24 hour cam. Maybe not 24 hour. Give me a solid 30 minute recap. Speaking of 24 hour cams, remember Ross's volcano cam in his house? Yes. <laughs> That's so good. He uh, was watching the volcano camera, camera at all times. Wherever the, there's a volcano erupting somewhere, and uh, Ross. I, I forgot about that. That was so he good. He had it. He had a volcano cam live streaming in his um, house, in his living room, literally like all the time. Are any of the ciders done fermenting? Yeah, we got three cold crashing that were all kvikes. We could take a little sample off of one of the kvikes. Yeah. Because it was a little sulfury and I do need to bottle it. Like today, I need to figure out what to do. I have to take some cider to a thing tomorrow. So oh, one of these needs God. to be... They're probably all gonna be sulfur bombs, right? They're young. One of them needs to not be. That's hopefully maybe the Kavite cleaned them up. All right. But yeah, they're funny though. The only one actively fermenting still is Mythical Hammer, but we have that one under a bar of pressure, and the rest of them we had under less pressure than that, or just open. Um, so they're all kind of cleaning up. And I don't know, cider is one of those things that I feel like time is your friend. It takes a lot of time. Because sulfur, they're very sulfury. Um, if you're an impatient person, maybe cider is not for you. Some of, some of it can be good, you know. Yeah, I and, remember and I'm we, sure there's like people that have tricks. But uh, I've made cider quite often, but once a year. And that's it, so. Yeah. But time is your friend, right? We never really just get juice. We always get the actual apples, and then that's like a yeah. once a year type thing. And there I like cider, but it's not like, I think if I was like a cider enthusiast, or like, like a meat enthusiast, like it's a very specific yeah. type of person that's going to put the effort in to like right. kind of nerd out about it. Not to say it's any different than home brewing, but in that sense of nerding out and getting into it. It's just not my thing. But I enjoy them. Here and there. Did I use the metric system? Very, maybe. I know, I know tens. Did you just say a metric, a Dude, metric ton? There's a very good song by a band called Adam and His Package. And there's a song called The Metric System. I highly recommend when the stream's over, checking out the song Metric System by Adam and his package. Probably my favorite band when I was like 14 until 43. Very good, very good song. Speaking to Ross, he just sent me a he just sent me an Instagram thing the other day. It was a guy who was from Europe who was making an argument for our system of measurement. 
He's like, if you want to make it make no sense. <laughs> well, <laughs> so it was, uh, he was talking just specifically about miles per hour and temperature. Oh, okay. So if you could think miles per hour as in like, a, and change the miles per hour to a percentage, then it kind of makes more sense. Because you're at you know? 100. Yeah, like 0 to 100. Like if you're at 100%, Right. Of your speed, you're going probably too fast. Or if you're like temperature wise, like if you're at 100% temperature, too fast, or sorry, too hot, too it's hot. like 7 sixteenths yeah, of an inch. 75%? Perfect. 77 sixteenths of an inch. He's like, yeah, that sounds perfect. Yeah. Like, I don't even, how do you visualize that? Oh, oh what am I, what's going on here? I'm living in a what neighborhood oh, where shit. all my neighbors have apple trees. No one takes care of the fruit. I pick up 100 kilograms of apples and make center every year. Dude, that's the best. Dude, 100 kilograms sounds like a lot. How much is it, though? 50 pounds? I don't know. 200 pounds? A million pounds? We lost Overlander. Oh, wait. Overlander. Overland Adventures. Um, what is 100 kilograms to pound? Okay, thanks guys, 200 pounds. How many, so how many pounds is in like 20 bushels of apples? Because that's what we just did. We did 22 and a half. Bushels? 22 and a half bushels for our cider project just recently. Man, does everybody know this off the top of their head? Yeah, we're not very good at things. I, <laughs> dude, I was not good at a lot of things. Mainly math, numbers, a lot of things we're knowing how at. many weeks are in a year, you know, yeah. those types of things. No idea. I was like 32, right? So I was right. 2.2 pounds per kilogram. Okay. Bushels, seriously? Yeah, I mean, we go, I don't know. So what's the European equivalent of a bushel? A satchel? <laughs> Satchels. <laughs> I bet that's what it is. And that just doesn't sound, that just doesn't sound. I really good. do wish we were on the metric system. It would be a lot easier. But the other funny thing is like home brewing. We could just switch to, we could start doing like we, bricks or no, like, what's the. Um, what's the thing? Like home brewing, we use specific gravity, but like every commercial brewery, they all use bricks. Yeah. And it's like the weirdest thing. It's like, why do you learn on the home brewing side specific gravity? Yeah. When every commercial brewer. They use bricks They use Celsius. bricks, Celsius, and the metric system should because. We just, should we just start doing that? No. I mean, we I, can barely, my brain. We can barely do Fahrenheit and specific gravity. I know. Like, I, we'll figure it out, but. I'm going to drink another beer and think about that. Isn't it? it it's a weird thing that, like, for whatever reason, home brewers are holding on to specific gravity. Yeah. Because, like. When we were burning with dissolver, I'm like, all right, what's a, like, what, what's that, what's that in gallon? You know, like you're like having that conversation the entire time. For uh, brewing uses bricks and standard, specific gravity, standard Sarah, gravity. Sarah, man. Sarah, yeah. She's doing it right. She knows what's up. Yeah, Sarah's kind of gearing herself up to be a commercial brewery. Yeah. And we know that we're not talented. We're 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 not um, under the illusion that we could ever be commercial brewers that's Weird. one thing we do know 25 years ago maybe yeah i think just because you have more energy yeah 100 percent 100 percent that's it now like you look at the amount of effort time money and you know what 25 years ago the bar the bar it was very low very low yeah. you could be a horrible brewery yeah. in a college town and so do very well. Very well. These days, no, you gotta. No. You have to actually like have your shit together. We're 68. I meant, do you want to keep going down to what? 50. Uh, <laughs> Call it there. 68 is perfect. All right. I'm shooting for 68. Is that what I said earlier? 68, 69. I think you did say 69. Yeah, 68, 69. Uh, so 4 I feel like English yeast. I like to keep on the cooler side yeah, versus the warmer. But we are going to be pressuring it, so. Good excuses, Emmett. Really hold it together. Oh, yeah, metric system makes sense. Uh, yeah, 100%. I 100% I agree with that. Thanks, Malcolm, for doing the conversions. I, yeah, I wish I knew. I just don't, I can't, can't do that in my head. 
Um, so Kyle stepped out for a second. I've been useless for the last 45 minutes. Um, we are down to yeast pitching temperature. In that time, Kyle's done everything. The keg appears to be sanitized, which is great. And our plan is we're gonna take a gravity reading. Remind me to do that. Um, to see what our starting gravity is gonna be. And then we got two SO4 packets, the blue ones. Um, and kind of depending where we land, will we use one or two? The kit, we, if you're in the States and you wanna brew this beer, we actually made an ingredients kit you can buy on our website. Put a link to it. We'll put a link to it. Um, but really good beer. We've, I've been brewing this beer for a long time. Actually, there's a link to it in the description of this video. Description of the video. And, uh, but it does ship with two, two uh, packs of yeast. Um, because you should probably use two. Yeah, so it was going to be like an 8% beer. Put the mic back on. It's going to be like an 8% beer? Yeah, it should be. Right? 8 or 9? It should be in the like 10, 78 range. It's going to be a. But if you want to go it's bigger. It's going to be like a winter. It's going to be a time change beer. Once if that you want to go. Changes, can hammer down on this. Yes. Forget that it ever happened. And if you want to go bigger, instead of doing a 30 minute boil, just do a 60. Oh, and make it even. Yeah, you yeah. end up with less volume, but you, it'll be a pack of better. Yeah, it'll give you a little more booze. Punch. Chiclet packs. No. So, we're at a perfect, perfect time of the day. What time is it? Oh, it's 5.13. Oh. I should check my phone. All right. I'm just checking his phone. We're still here, though. I'm pasting the links. So my uh, girlfriend's parents are in town tonight. Oh, <laughs> no. So I should be in I good forgot. shape. Yeah, yeah. You'll be fine. We haven't drank that much. Oh, oh, you know what? Crisis averted. They're coming in tomorrow. Oh, nice. They're leaving tomorrow morning. OK. They're, they're watching the live stream right now thinking, they're like, oh, we, we can just not, watch. We cannot come to this. Okay, perfect. All right. I would have held it together. I mean, her brother is pretty fun, so. But this will be a lot easier. What time did we start this brew day? Anybody know? Man, we one thirty. Yeah, like one thirty or 2 almost. That's not bad. Not great. <laughs> we've, we've been we're not even twelve hours. We're not even pitching the yeast yet. So, uh, dude, Africa, Africa Overland has been here from dude. literally the very start of this. He's the day. conversion wizard. So we're coming to Africa. We're overlanding with you. I absolutely want to do that. I don't know who wouldn't want to do that. I want to over. I'd like to overland. Dude, how fun would that? That would be, That'd be amazing. That'd be amazing. I'm just thinking about that. I'm just thinking about that. Like we'll insane brew a beer. Unimog that I saw at the Overland Fest. And the, they did. They did. They did um, overland tours in Africa. Like they did this race, Africa Overland. You probably know. We're, we're just assuming that we know what that that username means. But these people that I met, they did an overland I'm, I'm race. I'm assuming that's what that means. Yeah from the southern what tip of mean? Africa, like up to Antarctica or something like that. Arctic, Arctic, Arctica. Oh yeah, he's got a picture of a sweet, like four wheel drive vehicle. Um, okay, focus Emmett, we're still working. You just poured another beer, smart, yeah. because your girlfriend's parents Yeah, they're not coming. <laughs> now, let's, now let's have Lauren pick me up. Oh, the pro move. Pro move. Um, all right. So we're down the pitching temp. We turned the pump still going. Pro move. Keep Beats drinking. Off. Cancel your plans. Yeah. Keep <laughs> drinking. Call for help. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. 12.14 there. Oh, okay. A little more acceptable. Um, okay. So we got star sand in there. Is that correct? 
bottom of it. Wait a second. Patrick, what are you talking about, man? What's read that? that, read that comment. Cause Kyle, a couple pieces of feedback Trent gave me to the bottling wand, et cetera. Are you guys going to reincorporate that back into your product or just roll? Uh, Wait, I thought he changed that in his video. My, yeah, he may, we may have to rewatch it and then we watch have to the final version. It, yeah. But it comes with a bottling wand. Yeah, our um, one gallon kit actually comes with a bottling wand if that's what you're talking about. It hmm. comes with it. That's that's interesting. Yeah, I'll have to watch it. He sent us a preview and we said we're including it. Yeah, exactly. So it's possible there might have been miscommunication. Yeah. But with his yeah, advice as an upgrade, I wonder if he published the wrong video and then published the updated yeah. one. But yeah, it comes with a either way it comes with a, a bodily one. And that that it just always came with one. There was just miscommunication. Yeah. Uh, well so we've as we do with everything, there's like 10 different versions of everything that we make until we decide what we want. And sometimes that changes even after like we make all the stuff. I .e. keg project completely changed. I'm using my best um, restraint here to not drop a lot of uh, curse words. But yeah, the, um, the one gallon countertop root kit, we were gonna include a bottling wand and then we weren't, and then we were, and it sucked, and we have like a thousand of them, and now we're, yeah, we're throwing trying. those in the trash, and we're actually giving them to somebody else, and we're throwing, the, we're throwing them away. Yeah, and we're originally, we were just like, well, you can bottle short. with the spigot without the bottling wand, but then we tried it a couple times, it's a disaster. It's like, you need a bottling wand. You do wand. need a bottling wand, and, and our, it comes the with kit, it. yeah, includes yeah. a bottling wand. So, hopefully, yeah, I didn't watch this final video. We gotta check that out. But anyway. Yeah, but it's a one gallon kit. I mean, it's basic fermenter, bottling wand, and some some extract. So. All right, I need to ask this question again. I'm, I'm probably for the third time. Africa Overland he said it Adventures. Right there. What did he say? No, have you ever been to Asheville? Asheville, North Carolina. <laughs> have you been here? With your van. Because I feel like I've met you here, potentially. Um, I met somebody with a sticker on the side of their um, oh, really? ridiculous Unimog that says something like Africa Overland Adventures. Huh. When we've uh, we've actually started, we're transitioning over to overlanding as the topic of this channel, and this is just our last. We're basically last trying to get an day. overlanding. I got <laughs> two synchro vanigans in my garage that yeah. are trying to run. Mm -hmm. Okay, what are we doing? Where are we at? What day is it? What time is it? I think we need to dump What's the stars, the man. Okay. Yeah, we got two into the chat. Finally, yeah, we got to take our starting gravity. Oh, there we go. Dude, please help us. Starting gravity is a great suggestion. Yes, we're going to take a sample. Typically what I'll do is fill the keg and then any leftovers in here. Yeah. And we'll probably, we may use, may use our fancy boy just because it uses less liquid. Yeah, we'll bust out Antoine. The Anton part. What's with, um, didn't we have a bucket of star sand? That does not look good, wherever that is. That was star sand. That doesn't look right. That was star sand? Yeah. That's got like a bunch of grist in it though. Yeah, because it was, that was cleaning the kettle and basket out. Ah, okay. Well then, um, let me, I'm gonna get a clean bucket for this star sand from the keg. I'm gonna stand here. Guys, I have been useless at the end of this brew day. Um, so anybody just tuning in, I apologize. We are wrapping up the Imperial Oatmeal Style recipe that we're brewing. I feel like I said that same thing about 25 minutes ago. <laughs> but we chilled down our work. We're down to 68 degrees, which is a very nice temperature for USO4. We're gonna pitch two of these bad boys and we're gonna pitch it right into the keg that we're gonna ferment in. And we're gonna ferment under a little bit of pressure and probably gonna ferment it Room temperature, probably a little bit warmer than US04 would prefer, but put a little pressure on it, it should be perfect. And uh, there's a lot of truck that drove by. I want to thank him for joining the show. <laughs> uh, but that's where we're at. And if you're in the States, we'll have this ingredient kit. It's live on the website. You can hit the buy button and we'll ship it right to your door. 
Well, yeah. I personally won't ship it. We but. did a poll earlier to ask who had a homebrew shop 10 miles from their house. And Emma and I talked about this before the live stream. Personally, if you drive 10 miles and say like it's in town, right? It's going to take you much longer than 10 minutes. It's like a 20 minute drive. Our homebrew shop here is five miles away. It's that. Yeah, it's like four miles away and it takes like 10 minutes to get there. So, you know, I don't know, man. I'd just be like, if I had to drive to Weaverville, which is probably 10 miles from here every time that I wanted to give it homebrew like, ingredients. If I had to drive an I would hour each order, way. I would order it online. Instead. Yeah, if you had to go like over an hour, an hour or. That's just me. Or a, even a half hour, because half hour there, half hour yeah. back. Yeah, but we're thinking some, uh, probably a lot of people have, you know, their homebrew shops that they get their stuff from. Either they don't have one anywhere near them, or it's, I don't know, 30 minutes away or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and we've never wanted to deal with ingredients, because it's, yeah. it's a lot. It's a lot. And we still, we're, we're still actually not, dealing not with really dealing with them. We just partnered with our homies over at the Asheville um, um, Brew Supply. And yeah, we're we're offering this ingredients kit. So this is gonna be a good one. Check it out on our website. I put a link. It's called Space Force Imperial and Oatmeal Stout. Imperial Oatmeal Stout. So, and then the other the other kit we have right now is in Black IPA. We need to make a few more though. And we should do like you know we talk about our best beers. Yeah. We should do like the rice lager yeah. or something like 100%. that. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, this guy's ready for some work. Uh, okay, let me know what to do. Oh, I thought we were sourcing that from the chat. Uh, pump off. Where's Ross at? Tell me pump off. Pump off. Yeah, right? Yeah. Then we're going to transfer it into there. Okay, hold on. Yeah, we're going to turn pump up. All right, so yeah. before you do the ball valve, though. Yeah. I'm going to do this, actually. I'm going to put some star sand on my hands because I'm going to, like, dig into this. Oh, are you digging in? Yeah. Why are you digging in? I'm getting in deep. I'm going to take a drink of my beer first. You taking your ready? No. no. What are you doing? I'm more worried. Um, well, I was just going to dip. Here, you'll see, man. No, but why are we doing this? You'll see. Dude, this is, you trust me. Don't even worry about it. You're going you're gonna to love this in a minute. If it works. Are you going to go into the keg with that? Because I'm into that. Actually, that's not a bad idea. But up, I should have done that. All right, I'm going to do this. Let me do this. Anybody know what he's doing? Gravity ring. We're gonna is take the ball valve open? No. Yeah, open it. That's why I said don't don't close it. Uh, That's what I meant to say. All right, now close it. Okay. So this is what I want. I just want to get some word out of there, and then I'm gonna do one of these guys. Oh yeah. Ah. Yeah. You know you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I was worried. I thought, you were, you I gotta, thought you were sticking your hands in there. Sometimes you just gotta dip the end of the hose in some. We're gonna we're gonna take a gravity reading with whatever's left in the kettle, which won't be much. So we'll use the Anton part probably. Uh yeah. It's just sure. easy. Yeah. Okay. Gravity reading. Thanks, guys. We're going to do it. All right. I live six miles away from my local homebrew shop, and it takes me 30 minutes to drive. Yeah. That's kind of how it is. All right, I'm going to switch. But it's, worth, right it's nice there. having a, a homebrew shop in the region area. Right, chill. Chill on that for a sec. Okay. I'm going to switch this yep. angle up. We're going to switch to the sky cam. Uh, we're going to see what's going on here. Somebody tell Lauren I need to ride home. Mm. Everybody knows I do not like IPAs. This recipe, this beer is fantastic. Crush okay. them. We're going to lose our faces here, but good. we're going to switch to the sky cam and fill this keg up. All right, so All we're right. gonna let me know when to open the valve. Six miles takes 30 minutes. Sounds right. I mean, it just depends traffic. on where you live. Yeah. yeah, man. Dude, we live in Asheville and there's more traffic than you would. Dude, it sometimes takes me 30 minutes to go 1.2 miles. Okay, home. cool. I'm ready. I would Last put that off. thing down in there, but I, you know, this is more fun. And you, and you do a little aeration. Yeah. Dual, dual purpose. But while people are reminding us to take a sample, I am. Yeah, you want to just grab, grab a little bit of like fresh. Yeah. Kind of kill the, uh, there you go. Ready? Just put it under there, there you go. Perfect. 
All right, thanks for the reminder. Because really would have forgotten, let's be honest. So we're shooting for, I've asked this question like three times 1070. now, but it's like, it's six, like 1078 in that ballpark. 1076 to 1078. So it's gonna be like an eight or nine percent ABV. Yeah, I'm hoping it ends at like 1014. I don't remember. A little sweetness. I mean, the it's thing like with the, very, the oatmeal style is it's like at the very beginning of the imperial yeah. side of things. What's it, the imperial range? Nine, eight or nine, eight like or nine. Ten. I think like 1070 and above is imperial. Okay, so we went just above it. Yeah. So we gotta we gotta hit this number. Or, uh, or someone have to someone, just someone delete it. this video, right? Um, but we're gonna have. It looks like can you guys? Yeah, they can see. Um, tilt that kettle forward just so they can see what's going like on. Oh no, don't do that. It looks like motor oil. Yeah, go for so it. Yeah, good. tilt it forward. Tilt it, tilt it. Let's show them what's going on here, man. It does look like motor oil. It's so good. It smells really good. This is this is high viscosity. And that's very loose because Kyle uh, put the 20 gallon Whirlpool arm in by accident. They look identical, one's just a little bit longer to accommodate for the larger kettle. But it's not causing any harm. I just wanted people to, if you were concerned, 35 to 45 minutes in Brooklyn for five to six miles is normal. Yeah, I could see that for sure. If that was my life, I'd be, I mean, I'm I'd sure be, Brooklyn has its, I'd be on like, a bicycle. Plus, pluses, but that would be a big minus. I'd be on a bicycle. All right, dude, I think we nailed the volume, the liquid volume on that. Like, I feel like we just... We, we're still sucking. Absolutely nailed it. Nailed it. Yeah, there's a tiny bit left, but... That's fine. I think we're good yeah. in the keg. Oh, yeah. Keg-wise. Perfect. Um, let me get my phone so we can... Okay, so I need to find the gasket, which is probably on this. Was it not on there? So oh, we need to, let's add the yeast and then we'll add that. Yes, we should pitch the yeast. Yeah, we'll do that first and then we'll aerate. So I'm gonna switch the angle back real quick though. Sweet. All right. So you're gonna take a um, hydrometer reading, or are you doing using? Uh, I got Anton. I got Anton over okay. here. Got it. And it's called Beer Brewmeister. I don't know if anybody's used one of these. They're very expensive, but we've got ours for free. Full disclosure. Yeah, it's pretty rad. Would I buy one? Maybe. I don't know. They're pretty nice, but they're a lot. If you brew a lot, probably worth it. Yeah, I mean, if if we like, brewed as much as we do, which is a lot. Yeah. Not this year, but on, in a typical year. If you get a little, we had, and we had to pay for one, I would definitely buy one. If you get like a year-end bonus, maybe or something, be like, you know what? Yeah, you want to treat yourself. I mean, hydrometer is like, dude, four bucks, ten bucks, like, it's tough to. You're worth it. Because they are expensive, like. Yeah, we bucks. don't sell these, but they're nah. pretty nice. They're pretty nice though. He's really need a small amount. It's it'd be a tough justification, I think. Get get that past the finance committee. But yeah. again, man, one eight hundred flowers. One eight hundred flowers and a great couples uh, counselor or a, a, a solid divorce attorney. That's all you need, and you can you too can own an anti park. <laughs> <laughs> Easy done. Easy duns. Q, what's up, man? If you were here earlier, I missed it. I've missed a lot. Yeah, income tax. Like, we see that. People will use their tax returns to um, buy brewery, brewery equipment. If you own a brewery? No, man. If you are like a person who's like, I've paid too much of my tax and uh -oh. I got some money back, I got a little bit of spare cash. Oh, Easy yeah. Easy Anton Park. That's what somebody just said. I don't know how taxes work. Okay. If I had um, a smart you, yeah. You have, to make, you have to make money to pay taxes, so. It's true. 
So wait. Um, all right, I'll write my numbers down. You got it? Yeah, we're a little... Based on what you said earlier, I feel like we're pretty That can't close. be right. What do you mean? Because we started pre-boil at 1072. Oh, well, we, what do we need to be at right now? I mean, we, we're in the ballpark of where well, we need to be, but we started at 1072. Okay. It's showing 1073. That could be wrong, man. So we got that, discrepancy. That hasn't been calibrated. You yeah, know what doesn't need calibrating? An actual yeah, hydrometer. That's so true. Let's get a hydrometer. We got enough in there. We have hydrometers to this break. That's the problem. I feel spare. like you have so many different pieces of equipment. They all read differently. Dude, we have to do something about the cider apple pile behind our office because there are fruit flies all over the place. And we have nothing that they would want to eat in here. It smells like vinegar up in there, too. Yeah. It's pretty nice. Okay. Cool, so we're 68.8, so it's not gonna really need any temp correction, like not much. So let me see if we can get some more out of these hoses. Yeah, and there's still some in the kettle. Sorry, what was the target again, man? Like 10, I think 1074, 1075. Wait, that's the target? 1076, oh, yeah, the sheet's right there, I can't remember. I'm useless. The problem is I don't know how to read the sheet because I never I never checked. The, oh, it's 1078. Okay. So we were at 1073. But yeah. our pre-boil was 1072. Yeah. Well, I mean that could be wrong, but yeah, let's just take some more out of a hose and we'll see where we're at. So let's go. Let's go back to Skycam. Someone come help us. Yeah. I mean, it really doesn't matter. Go back to Skycam. It is what it is at this point. Yeah. Let's see if I let's see if I can get some enough water out of here to fill a cylinder and not make a huge mess. Oh, I would yeah, just put, I'd put it in that stainless thing first. I'm a, I think I can do it because no? I got a bucket to put it over. Bold, bold move. I like yeah. it. Yeah. They replace their bets. So this is off. I think we need to, uh, yeah, pull that out of the liquid. It's going the wrong way now. Uh, I mean, how's this live stream going? Pretty good? Is it going pretty good? Can you just hold hold this hose up? Yeah, hold this, yeah. And then grab that hose there. And then we'll be golden. Oh yeah, there we go, we're good. All right, that's not what you wanna do, but. I mean, that's perfect. Yeah, could have been worse. Yeah, could have been better, could have been worse. All right, rinse that off. I mean. Again, this is why the literature says don't start drinking until fermentation has started. Wait, what literature says this? You know, the literature that makes this, I, I have a, I have an alternate um, point of view. This is why you don't check specific gravity. Because who cares? It doesn't matter at this care. point. Like, it's done, right? Make a mess. Oh, yeah, I'm about to. Gotta, Again, dude. Here, I'm going to just do this. That's actually quite good. Not too much, you know, not too much of the cop. Bitterness in there. All right. This thing's floating pretty high. High in the sky. But you know what? Not high enough. Not high enough. I feel like maybe you're... A math on my 30 minute Well, it was kind of foamy when you looked at that with the mash temp hydrometer, so that might have been a little low at that point. That's true. We thought it was higher than it was, but we're not that far off. It like, looks like it's, I would say, 1074. Okay. So we're well, looking for 1078. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? I may not have done my adjustments right for a 30 minute boil. Yeah. Either way, it's going to make a beer. Let me spin it one more time. 
Yeah. Should we just dump the beer out? Let's just dump, dump it. Dump the wort? Yeah, I'm gonna say 1074. Okay. So that's not bad. No, pretty we'll, close. We'll take it. I'll write it down. Yeah. All right. 1074. So keg is full. I should have probably put the lid on already. I'm gonna do that real quick. Yeah, but I you mean, know what? so I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna take a little drink of this wort that I set aside earlier from the before we added the hops. Oh yeah. Because I feel like it's gonna be real good. I bet it will be nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's gonna be good. This beer is gonna be great. You can already kind of tell what it's gonna taste like. Ooh. Okay. So the beer is in the keg fermenter. Um, we're gonna go ahead and add some yeast and aerate, and then we'll be about done with the sprue day, minus a couple other things we need to take care of first. The scissor crisis of 2023 is still very real. We've lost our scissors. We're refusing to buy new ones because we know as soon as we do, the old scissors are gonna turn up. Scissors are like the most regulated item in the claw hammer office. If you don't put the scissors back in the, uh, the, the scissor drawer and you get busted with the scissors at your desk or something, you get, um, you get you don't get scolded, but you know, it's it's noticed. It doesn't go unnoticed. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and pop the yeast in here. All right. So USO four or SO four actually, right? Oh yeah, I don't know, I thought it's just called a US, but yeah, I guess it's just S. Just S. 20 years later, I figured it out. So we're still brewing, Kyle? Yeah, we're we're still brewing. Nice, let me get some star sand for the yeast. I just star sand one package. Dude, you're on it. Yeah. I don't even know why I'm here. All right, so we're gonna do two packages. Um, there's package number one. This is package number two. Kyle, you're doing a really good day, job on this brew day. Thanks, man. Yeah. Appreciate that. I've done nothing in the last hour. All right, number two going in. Nice. Didn't get any B-roll of this, so there might not be a video when, about this beer after all. I mean, I feel like this is, quality is good enough. You think so? Dude, for all you right. two, no one cares. Nobody cares anymore. Are you guys 4Kng over there? Nobody cares. Are you 720 peeing? All right, we're good to go. Hey, dude, dude, I feel like there's a lot of content creators there. 20, 720 peeing. Let me switch back. To this. No disaster. We're not done yet. We still gotta. Yeah, don't you worry. Don't you worry. We still gotta um, put a lid on. Okay, so we're gonna ferment this in um, a keg, and we've done one of these kegs back here that we've worked very hard on. We are using a floating dip tube on this guy. And just like the beer that Emma's drinking right now, um, this will allow us to just, once it's done fermenting, to pop it in the keyser and put it on tap straight away without doing any transferring. We've done a lot of testing on that and it makes no difference. No, Depending on the beer. You, yeah. can, you wouldn't want to do it with like a, a beer that had a lot of hop debris in it because the hop debris will continue to like bitter the yeah. beer. If you're doing dry hops, yeah. you don't want to set up. Yeah, it definitely forever. not dry hops, but. Number one favorite commercial beer. It would be an Asheville beer. I've never been a uh, like a dark beer fan until kind of more recently here in life. And I love coconut, and I can't get enough of the uh, um, the Bolo coconut porter down at Burial. And then they also just throw coconut and a bunch of their Imperial stouts. 
Dude, which they have is a coconut so good. IPA that's insanely good. Yeah. Right? Um, is that an no, IPA? Yeah, yeah, just recently yeah. they did a coconut IPA. Which and it was sounds, inc it was incredible. Sounds terrible, it was, but it's amazing. It was so good. They're just so good at what like they do. Like favorite commercial brewery you could probably pick up anywhere in New Belgium's 1554. Yeah, 1554. Yeah. Which is like such an overlooked beer. If you're going to New Belgium, 1554, it's so good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's so many good beers from like smaller breweries too. Have you ever find those scissors? No? Nope, never found them, man. Um, this is the scissor shortage of 2023. So we pitched that at 68 degrees. So, and uh, it just FYI, um, this, what I'm doing right here right now is I'm tightening up a thumb screw on this four inch tri-clamp with the screwdriver, which is really dumb. And if you're going to sell a product, you wouldn't want this to be um, like, the case for what the consumer had to do when they got it and we have solved that problem with our new keg which has a really cool a tool. sweet tool on it yeah that tightens the tri clamps up um, it gets them super tight and then also as part of our safety system so check that out the final parts are in production now we're completely done with that project that's why we're brewing again we haven't brewed in literally we brewed, this is our only our third batch this year, which is never, never the case. Typically we brew it like at least 20 batches. We'll do hundred gallons of homebrew beer and five gallon increments every year. And um, it just, we just haven't been able to do that because we've been so focused on the keg project. So super, super stoked to be done with that. I'm tightening this up way too tight because I'm gonna put the uh, spunding valve on this, but I'm gonna aerate it first. So. Yingling Amber Lager, yeah, I like Yingling. I haven't tried the amber though. Oh, is that different than the normal Yingling? Well, well, don't they have? Well, maybe I'm wrong. Don't they have like a different? Um, they have like they released a new. Oh, okay. Was it an IPA? Maybe. Maybe I'm completely wrong on that. Ooh, the Maui Brewing Coconut Porter. I feel like I've had that. That's kind of going to be on our near-term um, brew list. Yingling? No, the coconut porter. Coconut we porters are a great coconut, style. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we're just gonna do porters for the next month. We talked about throwing coconut in Stouts. this one, but didn't wanna didn't wanna like muddy the waters. Yeah, I I mean, I remember um, when we were in college, you couldn't get Yingling in Ohio, and I grew up in Ohio. And for whatever reason, there's a ton of kids from Pittsburgh that went to our school in Ohio. Yeah, and they would a lot. after Christmas break, they would just come down with like cases of Yingling. And it was the it's kind of, kind of like Christmas ale for Cleveland and the Ohio kids, but watch your beer there. They would uh, just come down with cases. You know, it's it's great. I enjoy it, but it was like so funny because they would just like have cases of the right. when they came back from break. I do remember that. It's a crushable good lager though. Oh, you know what we didn't? Gosh, we didn't um, we didn't remember and we didn't tell the chat either is we forgot to add the uh, um, zinc. Yep, done screwed up. Yeah, we're gonna add some of the old white labs. All right, I might do this on the ground. This makes yeah. no sense to do on this table. And they can still see you. I'm just Again, we got a lot, a lot of things going on here. Russian rivers, beatification, age 10 years, age sour. I mean, Russian river puts out some great beers. I haven't had do we have any Russian rivers in here still? Yeah, we have some. We have supplication and consecration. We got some special treats right, in the... I don't know if you can see it, but we got some special treats in the beer fridge, but concentration... Consecration? Co yeah, and concentration is what, you, what I need right now. <laughs> um, but I haven't... Man, I haven't had a Russian river beer in a long time. Coffee stout. Those Actually, beers have been in there for a long time and they're still amazing. We did a cold brew stout, I believe. Yeah, so it's been a, it's been a while. It's been a while. Nitro, and we put on nitro too. And I I feel like I b believe in the philosophy of use cold brew on your coffee beers. Like you don't get the bitterness or the astringency. Yeah. Oh, uh, we got we got Jason lives near Akron. 330. 
Oh man, have we made beer with chilies? No. I would like to. I would definitely like to do, we have an oxygen tank, Kyle. Do you want to get that? Oh, uh, no, because I'm done. I mean, we could hit it, but I'm, I, I did it already. Right. We bought like an expensive wanna, oxygen tank. Yeah, let's do it, man. We'll hit it with oxygen. Let's do that. Okay, what are we doing? Jason, where do you live? Oh, God. Um, what's the homebrew shop out in the, out in the falls? Um, <sighs> if Jason's listening, he'll let me know. Beer with chilies, man, I would like to do that. I like I beers with chili. Beer, yeah. Cincy, what's the, was it Rheingeist that's in Cincy? That brewery? That's the big Cincinnati brewery that's really, really good. I had a, well, my, a friend of a friend was a rep there. Ooh, that smells good. Yeah, Rheingeist, everything I've had from there is phenomenal. There we go. Okay. We're going to use an oxygen tank to, to aerate our beer, oxygenate our beer. Oxygen is really important for um, yeast health uh, during the early part of fermentation. So is zinc. We were going to add zinc to this beer, but we forgot. We did forget. Yeah. So. I didn't put it on the recipe sheet. So I'm just going to. This, dude, this. Uh, the PSI on this gauge goes up to a thousand. Is this open? No, I'm sorry, 150. That's five. Yeah. That's K. Kilopascal is 150. Grape and granary, yeah, that's it. Are they still distilling up there, Jason? How do you add zinc? That's a great question. And we went to a yeast learning class session seminar. Yeast learning class. Yep. A yeast, a class where you learn about yeast yeah. at White Labs. They have a very good educational program, but they make, I'll just bring it up to the camera. They make Benjamin. this guy. Benjamin's on it. Oh wait, that's no, not No, it's good. not gonna focus in. Gotcha. Um, but they make this. S Servomyces. I couldn't say it, thank you, Kyle. Yeah. Um, All right, cool. and they're basically tablets that you put in towards the end of boil, and it's basically just dead yeast cells that the yeast eat. They also add some um, zinc somehow. Sorry, sorry, white lives. Yeah, I don't okay, remember. Okay, um, so we don't normally do this, but we have invested in an oxygen tank and are going to start um, aerating our beers using pure oxygen. We always just shake in our buckets or shake in the keg. But yeah, like Emma said, we did a shook chicken, shook. Um, and like Emma said, we, we did a class at White Labs on yeast. It was really informative, and one of the things we learned was, of course, oxygen is really important. We learned why it was important, which I think, you know, kind of helped um, drive that point home. And so we went out and we invested in a tank. Now, the tanks of oxygen are actually very cheap. They're not expensive at all. They're like less than $20. Uh, and this is going to last us forever. But the tank itself and the regulator are quite expensive. Like you get it filled cheap, but the yeah, initial investment. Yeah, you get it filled is cheap. So yeah. you know, if you want to do this, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna cost you, it's gonna cost some money, right out of the gate. But the like the you know consumable part of it, I mean, the, just a single tank of oxygen. This is going to last us so long. Oh yeah. So we finally did. We yeah. finally bit the bullet, dude. We're really doing it, man. We are really doing it You can also, from what I've read on the internet, get those like little oxygen tanks at like, Home Depot, oh, like yeah, one-time sure. use. But I'm not a one-time use guy. I'd rather no, yeah, get something I can refill. refill. Yeah. I don't want something to go in yeah. the landfill. Or to shake it, like I've done for the last 25 years. Yeah. We're brewing a Imperial Oatmeal Stout. I had to we look brewed. at the recipe. We yeah, brewed. We brewed an Imperial, yeah, uh, we're done. Imperial Oatmeal Stout. We are done. Yeah. Jesus. Cheers, man. Thanks, Kyle, for brewing that yeah, while I hung out. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I was here for the bash. Yeah, but those those little zinc things, man, very good. Those little zinc things are very yeah. good. <laughs> Is that your final answer? Yep. Okay. <laughs> so should I call Lauren and tell her I'm probably going to need a ride home? Yeah, probably. I can't, I can't drive you. Yeah. No. 
All right. Um, you have to have a yearly license for a tank where I am. Expensive. Yeah, we don't really where have rules that? on stuff like that. Looks, I'm guessing Swiss, 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 Swiss gaming. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Ireland. Oh, interesting. That huh. does check out. Yeah. I wouldn't want to just give oxygen tanks, you know, to people. Well, in LA, to Irish people. <laughs> yeah, <literally. laughs> a bunch of crazies. That's really interesting. All right. Huh. Well, suddenly got. We're, I think we did it. Flurry ads. I think uh, I'll end this yeah, by it. calling my girlfriend and asking for a ride home. All right. Well, uh, thanks for hanging out, everybody. Uh, we have an Imperial Oatmeal Stout here. We didn't really spill much of anything, so you can buy the that. recipe on our website. Yeah, but um, yeah, if you want, if you have a local homebrew shop near you, um, we're gonna put the Moog. Um, we're gonna put the um, recipe on our website, so you just go get your greens there. Or if you want, if you don't have a local homebrew shop near you, you can pop um, into the description of this video and the recipes, I'm sorry, our recipe kit is there and we'll send it straight to your door. Everybody, thanks for hang hanging out at Africa, Overland, Hans, Jared, Swish Gaming, Northwest Small Batch Brewing. Um, both Northwest Small Batch Brewing and Africa Overland have been here, I think since the beginning. Yeah, impressive. Maybe even uh, Garim. Uh, Green, see you can have I, Hargraves. I've seen you here for a long time. I haven't mentioned your name much because I can't pronounce it. But anyway, guys, Benjamin, everybody's been uh, super cool, super fun to hang out with. It's great. And we made beer, everybody. And we made some beer. So this is going to be. I'm Kyle excited made, for this. Kyle one. made beer. I yeah. commentated. Yeah, Appreciate I'm it. Excited. All right. Good to be back in the brewing game. All right. Thanks, everybody.